Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pass the Barb. Today is Monday, June 12th, and we are back. We went, uh, we did a little one week hiatus, uh, going to every other week for the summer, and we are back in a big way. <laughs> he, uh, he is returning back. from his vision quest. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> How was the Joshua tree, Cody Honor? <laughs> Repping the brand, flying yeah. the flag here, boys. Flying the flag. Damn. Yeah, if you're not watching on YouTube, Cody is wearing an electrician's sweatshirt. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, there he is. We're back. We're back. He is back, and we are also joined by, of course, Mr. Ryan Pinkala. You know I'm here. And his, his Wi Fi <laughs> you know is I'm very here. sketchy. Yes. Yeah. Yes, his his Wi Fi is definitely sketchy is today. <laughs> Said, you know, I'm here and then just froze immediately. <laughs> um, so that's great. Welcome back. Drunk Woody, start drinking, baby. We're coming in hot. Uh, unfortunately, right. so Stolsky, we're going to see what happens. Uh, he shot us all a text, and basically, it Stolsky doesn't want to leave the podcast. Uh, Stolsky has no Wi-Fi or access to like any service or anything where he lives in Montana now. So reaching him is virtually impossible. So we will see what goes on there. Uh, I'm sure he will dip in when he can or whatever, but that's what's going on with Stolsky for anybody wondering. Um, yeah, he's lost in the mountains basically forever. Yeah. Plane crash status, dude. Yeah, definitely. But the way we have to kick this off is just, Cody, where have you been? Like, it's been like two and a half-ish months now. I mean, you plugged in for like one episode, <laughs> I think. Other than that, you've been like off the grid. So fill us in. What's been going on? I yearn for the sites. <laughs> I yearn for the construction sites. That's my life. That has been my life. I have literally lived out of a hotel room. Mostly, we're, we're not talking Holiday Inns. We're talking like uh, Amic Motel types, type deals. We're talking like $82 a night. Yeah, they don't, you know, you, you go to, you go to flip on the switch for the light. Well, the light doesn't come on because you got to, you got to go flip the actual bedside lamp. And then you can flip the switch on. Then you got, you know, some flickering lights. And uh, we don't we don't really have the outlets are just kind of there to appease you. There is no power in the place. So is and this like uh, the, like you put some quarters in the bed to make it fucking vibrate around or what? Well, you can try that. <laughs> 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 and yeah, the, the the continental breakfast is quite something. You got some uh, uh, brand flakes uh, mm. that have been sitting in there since probably 2005, mm. and milk that is about a half a year expired. But you know, the guy sitting at the counter is drinking it because you can see it rolling down his face. But you know, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's been something. We've been we've been out of town for the last. Up until the last like two weeks, we've been out of town for the last 10 or 12. And it has been a great time being a construction worker. <laughs> awesome time. I love it. So to... I got to ask, is the job done? Job not done. Oh, I no. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not no it, it's done. It's done. I was oh trying to do my God. best. I was trying to do my best Kobe Bryant impression. <laughs> I just was actually concerned. I think I, I was think like, oh my God, got no way. Sure. Boy, I man. fully sure. believed you. I was like, three months, he's not done. Job so what, you were screwing in light bulbs or what? Yeah, basically. I was just putting up lights <laughs> the entire time. Yeah. It sounds but, cool, but I just put in 10,000 you know, light bulbs. It was, I think it was, was 2,500. But yeah, yeah, same, same. Same, same. Yeah, it's, you know, it was it was one of those experiences. Luckily, we had a pretty decent crew. Like, the one night we actually went golfing. Um, Bart, you'd appreciate this. None of the people are golfers. So, we made a little money off of that. I, there you she, go. It was, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Um, we did flip a cart on the back nine. 
Oh god. It was fine. How much damage. We drove it, we kind of tucked it in the back, you know, the lands. We tucked it in the we tucked it in the back. Yeah, so like you lands. got in and instead of like breezing by the clubhouse, you were like just parked it in the back. We're like, oh here's your keys. Get the go, 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 go. <laughs> the roof may have been caved in and barely hanging on and uh a cup holder did fall off. But hey, it was a good time. We had a good time. Thank you, White Tails of Menominee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! That's got to just oh, yeah. be a it grind was, for that. Dude, long it, it's now. it it is it's it's a grind. But luckily, you're there. It's not like you're by yourself. So when you got good guys around you, you can just like make fun of what you're doing, make fun of the choices that you made to be here. You're like. <laughs> Having fun? No. <laughs> no. no. I, I will say the Me too. I, I can appreciate the quality of Snapchats that came out of this. Trip. Oh my god. I Did really you save any of those, Honor, because we gotta post them on the social so media. Hor- I'm so horrible at saving them because I it's like it'll be a brief moment where I'm like fumbling for my phone. I'm like kink and then forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever yeah. whatever Honor electrician snapchats we can get you gotta save them <laughs> so we can have pink tossing them up on the but, social they're beautiful but, they really are some some of the job site isms that, that I see every day where you're like anyone nope nope just me alright all right. I gotta say I, I, only, mean, I only saw that alright people, no, whatever. people no, that are watching this didn't obviously get those, but like that Blues Clues one hit me hard, dude. Oh, I was yeah, dying and laughing. That's, that was the owner. <laughs> that was the owner of the building. So, so basically, I don't know if you if he sent you that one, Bart or whatever. But there's yeah, a guy maybe, wearing but... like like the exact sweat. Oh yes, no, he did send that to me. Yes, <laughs> you started oh, explaining it, that it like flashed into my head. I was yeah. like, I remember this. I'm like 30 feet up in a lift and I see this guy who looks kind of important, but he also <laughs> looks like a goofball because he's wearing a perfectly straight blue and black polo that looks like Blue's Clues. <laughs> what is his name? What's the guy's name from Blue's Clues? Uh, I don't know. Steve. We're all lo- Steve. Yes. Steve? That's Steve. it. That's it. Yep. Looks identical to him. And. He's got his hard hat on. He kind of walks in this like weird shuffle, like he's had a limp for a long time. And I'm like, who is this fucking weirdo? All right. And he he starts talking to this guy. I'm like, oh my God, look at what he's dressed in. I look at the the apprentice that's next to me. He's like 18. He's like, Do you have the notebook? I'm like, yeah, that guy gets it. <laughs> yeah. God damn, that's funny. Yeah. That's mm. great. I'm sure we'll so run into more random stories. So are you no, done what? with that now? Or you're, yeah, you're on to yeah. another one, right? We're on to another one. It's always another one. It, it, it's it's kind of weird being on, on those sites because you're like, because we yearn for them. But... <laughs> <laughs> No, you like you're there for so long that you think that you're gonna be there forever, and then all of a sudden it's done. You're like, oh, all right, well, you got to go over here. You're like, what? What do you mean I got to go over did here? Did you at least get the forever. satisfaction of installing the last one? I did actually. Oh, fuck, I did. Yeah. Here we I go. I did. I did. <laughs> so, what's that moment like? Uh, what is that moment like? Sweet relief, except it. Uh, I. It may have not worked. The last one, <laughs> and it, it shocked me really bad. <laughs> well, that explains a lot. So it felt interesting. Yeah, it felt, yeah. It felt a little tingle down low for a different. I'm, I'm picturing like the Griswold oh, like plugging the cords together. Oh, like that was what it was. One. Okay. <laughs> oh, it was so perfect. Now that you bring that up, because they were like, you're not going to understand this, but they're like plug and play. So. Think of, uh, you know, something like a battery charger where you just plug it in. And we had a process going where there was the groundies, the ground crews, and they weren't good enough to be high flying up in the lifts like us. 
us airborne men, we're on the front lines out there putting lights up. But um, <laughs> so you basically just plug it in, plug it in, and go on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. Well, this one, they're really chintzy. Like, we're trying to make it as efficient as possible. So may have chanced out a little bit but <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like trying to plug it in and some of them when the power's off you gotta like really work to get it in there so i kind of spaced it was the last one of the day last one of the job i'm like ancient poof like, shot through my finger and went out the other finger and the same apprentice is like are you okay? I'm like, his hair's all fucking smoking and yeah, shit. He's like, yeah, you look like Mar from Home Alone. Like, no, no, I'm not okay. No. Did we win? <laughs> <laughs> that oh light God. didn't make it. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it is it is something. I mean, I hate it. I hate it completely. But. It is something when a job is done and you're like, wow, humans actually, this group of people actually did this. <laughs> you trusted us with this? <laughs> like, poor mistake. <laughs> well, that's good that yeah. it's done, dude. Cause it's like, that one sounded like a serious grind, dude. Like, uh, really bad. It's just monotonous, just mentally all day long as many hours as you could do it just same process over and over again it was just straight monotony like you started singing whitney houston on your lips to the like uh there's this one kid that works for us he's uh so i don't know the exact story but i think his dad or his grandparents got out of like the amish community so you know i'll i'll send him I'll like fire quotes his way, like shows, TV, like movies, music. And every once in a while, he picks up on like an obscure one. Like he picked up on a Rick and Morty quote of mine, which I thought <laughs> no one in their right mind would have gotten. And he's like, ah, Rick and Morty. I'm like, <laughs> but then you can, you can talk to him like happy Gilmore, like, <laughs> like, you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? And he's like, I don't get it. I don't understand you. Oh, but, my God. Yeah, that's kind of the crew that I work with. <laughs> a that's team. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Kind of the C team that was sent over there, but that's all right. <laughs> you you embolden it. You love it. Mm -hmm. You are that team. We yearn for it. Hunter's the it. captain. Yearn. He's the captain of this team. I am. Probably an A. I got an A. <laughs> good. I wear in the A. You know, we're here for a good time. Yeah, in the box every once in a while. Yeah. But, you know, you're good. Yep. Um. All right. So well, I'm sure we'll get more stories out of Cody as we keep milking through everything. But uh, Pink, what have you been up to? What's the last two weeks been like for you? Uh. Well, unfortunately, I'm following Cody's here with. Uh, I've pretty much been doing a lot of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you got you no. got the bug so yeah, cody wasn't here cody you know that ryan got a boat so yes. yeah. um pink's well, got the he good was... old he got a boat bug so, so we like, had been talking yeah. outside of the, the podcast about yes about this but take yes. it away well anyway i got it i think you're well and you were supposed to come fishing with me first of all i was supposed to come fishing with you best uh, ditch out i've ever made yeah that's it ditch was we'll, we'll made. dive into <laughs> that later but yeah it was, <laughs> it was. <laughs> i am so happy to leave you hanging <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so anyway so we're i think the last time we talked i was going it was uh, two weeks ago it was right before i had the minnetonka classic so it would have been like the last week of may it was right yeah, after so it was Memorial right weekend. it was right before musky opener minnesota mm -hmm. so i was just in wisconsin uh went out here and went out with a body like opening day and we just went we went fishing for tigers so like around at least the metro area uh, in minnesota they stock a ton of lakes with tiger muskies 
mm-hmm. which is kind of a cool area because it's like m- the lakes that have them. That's literally like the only muskies in them, right? Is tigers. So we mm-hmm. kind of wanted to and- go try what. Oh, I was going to say, Hunter, you would like that generally, too, because, Pink, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the lakes I know that have tigers have basically zero pike. Like, uh, there's not I, pike. For the most part, yeah. I mean, there's yeah, some, you, but it's like it, they, they're they definitely, like, more dominant than the pike. Yeah, Yeah, there's very few pike in like those they lakes. they were stocked in, in those yeah. places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were stocked in there for a reason, obviously. Mm-hmm. But that's what's nice when you're there, honestly. When you set the hook, you're like, oh, it's a tiger. Not yeah, a tiger. and normally, normally they're not that hard to catch either. Uh, well, Saturday sucked, first of all. We got one, and it was very small. Um, but then we ended up bass fishing for a while, and we pretty much smashed them, which was super fun. And then uh, I guess I'll just get into this. So Hunter ended up going to uh, up north instead of fishing with me. He got an invite and I was like, dude, do that. That sounds way more fun anyway to go. Uh, are, are we going to talk about what we got, to, right? Yeah. yeah like we, now. Yeah, we're, so, yeah so, you can you can dive in. Well, we won't we won't just close too much. But essentially, uh, Hunter, you went to Mille Lacs for yeah. opener. Yep. And then basically the what was going down was. You ended up getting a really solid invite to go up there. I was like, yep, that's totally cool. Like, I don't care if you want to do that. Like, mm-hmm. it's not going to hurt my feelings. But then it went down pretty hard. And so I literally, on Saturday, I fished all day and then ended up driving to Mille Lacs. <laughs> <laughs> to Which... be fair, to be fair, Ryan, yes. I was begging us to go there. I, I'm like... Ryan, it is a full moon. There is one place I want to be. I want to catch a freaking magnum. Like, let's do it. I I know. I know, dude. Ancestors would be perplexed at if we are not there. Yes. You you said said that. No. I said said that. Yeah, I said I didn't. I wasn't going (laughs) to drive up there, but because you've never. That was your first time there, right? Uh that that time of the year. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. I had been up there in the spring like one time before, and I was like not super psyched about it. So that was why when Honor was like, dude, let's go to Malax, let's go to Malax. I was like, ah, I don't want to go to Malax. Honor, if you want to dive into how your Malax trip went too, you can. We can talk about it now. Yeah, okay. why don't you go? Because then my story will like pick up pretty much where yours ends because you didn't make it back there <laughs> yeah and i can <laughs> i can kick it off with honor ended honor ended up in minnesota because him and i got invited to be on teal's bass galaxy that was the so whole bas- reason that mm-hmm. that i was yeah. there so basically right. me and honor uh picked a weekend i was fishing the minnetonka classic and after it i was going to drive to teal's and like in the beginning of may i asked cody if he could pencil out that weekend and we just randomly picked it yeah. Well, leading up to it, he like texts me. He's like, "Dude, it's a fucking full moon on musky opener. Yeah. This is the best." <laughs> he's like, "This is the best random scheduling I've ever done. This type of stuff doesn't happen it, to me." It, it's the Minnesota musky opener. I'm like, "Holy shit!" If you know nothing about muskies, like full moons, new moons are a big deal. Full moon on the opener of Minnesota is well, like, and wait. So you were just coming off the Wisconsin opener too. Yes, and, over in Green Bay, and uh, it was like semi good for your group. Yeah, it was. So you okay. kind of were already bonered up. Like, yeah, I was ready to go. Yeah. I was ready to go musky fishing. Like, yep. I got a little taste, but then I wanted like a full bite yes. of of fishing. Yes, and. So we decided, like, we ended up on Mille Lacs, and if you know anything about Mille Lacs, like, musky fishing, it used to be, and it still is, like, a predominant figure in the musky world, but there are only certain times of the years where you can really get on them. It's not it, heyday. No, 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 no. It's like is stars there, got all line. Is there yeah. just not a lot of them anymore, Cody? So for the size of the fishery, there's not a lot of them. But when, like, what we ran into, you'd think there's millions of the things. But just for the size of the fishery and how spread out they get during, like, the summer period, not even close to what it used to be. Gotcha. And, well, when we got there, my my buddy Sam has 
these green lights on the side of his boat so when you're night fishing you can watch your bait come in and you can see the figure eight and you can see the fish behind your bait rather than just night fishing in the like pitch black where you can't see your bait and you're not engaged with the fish so as we're going out to Mille Lacs, it's Mille Lacs. so i'm thinking either we're going to catch a giant or we're going to see nothing it took two like two to five casts and we had like a 47 48 inch up I'm like, well, that's cool. Well, that's probably going to be the only action of the trip. And it just continued and snowballed and snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. Like in the first pass, in the first probably 35 minutes, we saw 10 to 12 of them. And I caught one and I lost one and Sam lost one. And on the next pass, the Trevor, the guy in front of us, lost two in back-to-back casts. I caught one the next cast. And then behind us, we hear the boat that's probably like 20 yards away from us. They both hooked up simultaneously as we had the one in the net. They caught a 53 and a half in like a 55 and three quarter. And throughout the course of the weekend, I heard of five other fish over 55 inches caught, which for those that don't know musky fishing, like that is... I mean, that's a unicorn. That's that's a 14, pound, 14 to 15 pound bass. Like that's humongous. And it just kept going and going. Like the, once the sun came up, because I think like Minnesota fishermen, they, they like going when it's daylight. It seems like, like they're not, I mean, it's there's definitely only way less boats. night fishing. Yes. Yep. There's only three boats during the night. And then there's like, 25 to 30 boats in this bay during the daylight but i watched like net after net after net like the fish flags going down and scooping up fish over and over and over again i mean we probably saw like personally with my eyes like 35 to 40 muskies caught it was which is crazy unbelievable yeah unbelievable like i i haven't had a minnesota experience like that let alone a wisconsin experience like that where you see all these big fish and it's not like they're 38 inches. They're mostly all like 46 inch plus, like big, big fish. And it was insane. And the craziest part was you thought, I thought that we were working kind of like the same 10 to 15 fish in this like half mile, three quarter mile stretch. But it was every single pass was a different fish and a different fish. I'm like, there can't be this many in this many weeks or like this small of a spot. There's no way. But then once daylight hit, like you watch all the nets drop and you're like, no, there's literally 300 like in here. Yeah. There, there has to be. It was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Right. It was, so, it was so cool. So then you guys go and do this podcast like in the, the next day, right? Yep. Cause this, like all of your action went down like right away in the morning, pretty much yep. before the first two. Well, hours. you guys yeah. got one like later, but so yeah. Hunter, you got there Friday night at midnight. So Saturday morning at midnight, whatever. Yep. And then fished until Saturday at like five ish. I'd imagine. Yeah. Four. Something like that. Just yeah. Like four or something like that. So I fished down in the Metro, like in the morning and we mm-hmm. fished pretty much throughout the day. Then I talked to you and you were, well, you would text. I texted you in the morning. And you, had, you were sending me pictures of the ones you already got. Yeah. And I was, like, pretty hyped. I was, like, that's badass. And uh, and then we chatted on the phone later about how it went. And I was, like, God, that sounds kind of lit. And I was fishing with uh, DeMarkey, actually. And yeah. so we were kind of, like, God, maybe we should just do that. Like, that doesn't sound like it sucked. So we're, like, in my drive. We're, like, literally sitting in the boat, like, in the driveway, like, crushing some. We just went and got some tacos. And we're just, like, sitting there. And we're, like fuck it let's go <laughs> <laughs> so we li- like we literally were like dinking around i like throw the throw the charger on like while we're getting everything ready and we're like oh, let's just drive up there so we did yeah we, la- we left we ripped up there and then you guys were on the podcast or whatever and i think i talked to you you guys sounded oh. fucking hammered dude yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were, teal we're... teal does a good job hosting yeah so Teal-ro. then i was like i was like there's no way he makes it back to fish because no. you were telling me like dude i'm just gonna go in and out like i just gotta get this thing done and i'm going right back to fishing <laughs> pink you gotta you I gotta tried. love this quote honor honor looks at me in there and chapman and teal are there it's gonna be a great podcast for people mm-hmm. who want to listen when it comes out it's gonna be great um but chapman is 
the, we're all kind of chatting. And then I think Hunter went outside to go grab something before we record. And Chapman and Teal look at me and they're like, the fuck? I thought you said like Hunter knocks back beers. And I'm like, he does. I'm like, why? And they're like, well, he got here. He said he's going to have one. And then he's going back. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, it, I was yeah, like, lesson I'm... number one of Cody Hunter, his peer pressure <laughs> level is a finger prick. Yeah. Like, I'm like <laughs> you offered him one, just slide it over. Yeah. <laughs> so he sat back down and Chapman just slides him a bottle of whiskey and a beer. And Cody's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, he put Since up zero open. fight. There was zero fight. <laughs> It was yeah. great because <laughs> so, I call I called you while I was on my way there, and I don't even it. There was nothing coherent because there was like five people in the room just yelling. Yeah, well, so and I, Teal was on the phone with someone else at the same time on speakerphone. So there oh, were two okay. people on speakerphone. Teal's on the phone with one person. Honor's on phone with you, dude. Like, and I'm just like, what boat ramp do I need to go to? <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm literally driving because I was Love. trying to. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, because like your buddy was still up there, so I was trying to like connect yeah. with them or whatever. So whatever, I ended up finding him in the middle of the night anyway. But uh yeah, we got up there at like one a.m. Probably. Yeah. So we yeah. just put like we literally get to the boat ramp, dump in, go out, we're like whatever, idle in some stuff, looking for like a spot, and then. I was like, this isn't it. So we ended up going to a different area. I linked up with, with Sam up there and mm -hmm. they were pulled, they were like leaving and, yeah. uh, and whatever. So it was good. Like I, I'd never met him before either. So that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So we were just kind of shooting the shit for a while. And, uh, they were like, yeah, dude, we're like burnt. <laughs> like we're out of here. And, uh, so I, Damn. I went out and dude, like it didn't take long, honestly, in the dark, uh, we had one up like i don't have lights or anything on the outside so we were yeah. just like let her buck you know we'll see yeah. what happens but it was Going full moon it was mm -hmm. full moon and it was clear out mm -hmm. and so you could actually see decent you know yeah. and i had like the graphs turned down on low so you didn't like fry your eyeballs out and uh we had one up on a like a chopper like right away yeah like and we were like oh shit like this this is real you know it's gonna go down probably so we had like very little action but it's like hard to tell because you couldn't see if you had follows i mean the one was on a top right. water so you could actually like see it but yeah um we fished around for a while and there's like i think two other boats in there which are probably mm -hmm. the same two boats that were in like you know what i'm saying yeah um and everyone was just kind of fishing around and there was like nothing really happening because all you can see is like people's bow and stern light you know mm -hmm. and it's funny because everyone's like even though there's only a couple boats everyone's fishing like super close together yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah. Not... it's like the the g spot on a it mile is. stretch yeah yep. so we're we're messing with that and then you know how like when you when you're fishing at night and it's like because you don't have all your lights on until like something happens you like turn on a headlamp or whatever right so you're kind of like, you kind of like dozing off, just like grinding. Yeah. You're like, I don't know, whatever. So you kind of do like half a figure eight and fire it back out there. <laughs> and and I'm like, I'm just like slowly reeling. DeMarkey's like, dude, I think I'm going to, I got to crash, man. I'm, I'm wiped. I was like, go for it, man. I'm just going to keep throwing. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> so he, he kind of curls up on the back deck and's like kind of sleeping or whatever. And I'm just like about to pass out, just chucking and whining, chucking and whining on this blade. And I mean, I like fired it out there one time. I was like pert near falling asleep and I just get locked up, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, I set the hook on it. And I'm like, fish, fish, fish. And he's like, he's like rolls off the back oh, deck, shit. like in a, like has no idea what's happening. Just like yeah. looking for the net, like trying to get his life together. And I'm yep. like, I don't know, dude, like it's coming. Like, I don't know. And it ended up being a big pike. So I was like, fuck. <laughs> but, uh, but like you couldn't tell you know i'm like oh, it's yeah. set the hook and the fish is fighting and it's come and of course as soon as i stuck it it like boils on the surface big so like all the other boats right there are like what's going on over there yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah everyone's yeah, like yeah. coming closer because yep. they're like want to check it out yep so whatever we get it in and it was like whatever it was this nice pike or whatever so i now i'm like totally brain fogged out and so I let this thing go and i'm like okay i'm taking a nap now <laughs> <laughs> So he fished for a while and I like pass out. And now when I wake up, the sun's like coming up. Oh no. <laughs> like, Shit. But he's like, he, he just turns around and he's like, dude, I've seen like five. 
<laughs> so, I was like, so I was like, I'm like, kind of like, oh shit, okay. So I get up and I like stand up on the front deck and I like grab a rod and I'm just like looking around and I'm just like, there's one. <laughs> like, yeah. just swimming, like well, probably like a 45 inch or just like, there it is. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. and it's clear, like the water's like an aquarium. So there's yep. just like, whatever. So we ended up seeing a handful and I had one uh, come in after a jerk bait in that super clear water, which was mm -hmm. fucking nasty. And it was probably like a 46 inch or really nice one. Yeah. So it was, it was exciting, even though whatever, it didn't go down. We didn't, we didn't end up catching one. Uh, and then DeMar, I, you seen that picture. He caught like, I'm assuming the state record bullhead on a shallow <laughs> invader. Naturally. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I saw that picture he just posted Naturally. and I was like, what the fuck? Like we literally got it in the boat and I was like, I mean, I don't think they get that's better. That's it. Man. That's that's the one. That's it was the biggest big enough that a bullhead looked like a catfish. Dude, and like he was that's... just he was like grind, it's a big bait, like a shallow invader, yeah. you know? And he's just like, and all of a sudden he's just like fish. Locked yep. up. Yup, that's <laughs> it. Yep. That's yep. the bullhead. And right away it was like, mm, I don't think it's her. And then like he gets it up to the boat and he just like boat flips it into the carpet. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Why did you just do that? <laughs> well, and it was, that? and it, it was, it was like snagged a little bit and it was, it bled all over the entire oh, goddamn boat. No, like not only do you everywhere, have, not only do you have that in your boat, it's bleeding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so whatever. So we, we end up letting that go or whatever. And then I think we had like one more follow or something after that. And eventually we were just like, okay, hey, this is dumb because now there was like, I shit you not 30 boats. Oh yeah. You know? That's what it was when the daylight went, but dude, like the, the sights and sounds of that opening morning. Yeah. That's hard to dude. Unbelievable. All you heard, like right off the get go, like I'm, I'm pumped up. Cause we're like, we're out there and we graphed and we're like, holy crap that cabbage bed is there mm -hmm. like all right let's go let's go and we're waiting and there's other boats kind of waiting and all of a sudden at like midnight hits the minnesota wind chimes are just flying which are yeah, yeah. blades hitting you can hear it. it's like it's a sound you'll never forget just ding, 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 ding. <laughs> 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 but all of a sudden like as soon as the major hit you just hear just crashing on top of the surface <laughs> people screaming flashes going off from cameras and then guys like you hear like whoosh 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 fuck fuck <laughs> fuck fuck yeah like no, some it's... guy lost the biggest fish he's ever hooked in his entire life yeah and it's over and over again like people screaming Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Over it a just, fish, it just like, sounds it's, like a war zone. Oh, it's yeah, a, it, it was. Yeah, it's it's dude. Awesome. And during the day that's is wild, wild because like you can yeah. literally cast into every other boat. Like that's how close everyone's fishing. Yeah, and like, yeah. but no, but no one's like acknowledging that anyone else is there. No, you just kind of like you're just head down you. fishing and like just firing it right at other people's gunnel. Yeah, just like, like yep. The bait lands like two feet away from your boat, and you're like not even phased by no, it. No, just... it's like a totally different world. But uh it was bad, but they had gotten so mutilated the first night. Like literally I mean, all the fish that were there were like, <laughs> good joke. Yeah, like <laughs> I mean when when you said you're coming over, that's why I was suggesting to go to another bay because I well, watched, and we did like, try, but that was the I thing, is like the like, water like, temps were look. whack, dude. Like well, there they, weren't the spots didn't set up right in those other areas. Like we looked, you know? Yeah. They, they crushed them there this week. Yeah. I crushed believe it. Them. It was cause like the water temperature was like five or six degrees different in like yeah. those areas. So yeah. it's interesting that it fired off like super hard and then like it fired. It's not like it was just one and done. Like it fired off again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which is and it, pretty sick. Five over 55 out of one bay out of one spot. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I've never seen that. And Pink, we'll get into the rest of your weekend, but I'll just chime in with my musky opener experience because I was bass fishing. However, Big I guy. also come into this Huge story because I called Pink and I was like, yo, where are you going musky fishing next? And he's like, oh, I don't know, whatever. And I'm like, go to Minnetonka. <laughs> he's like, why? Yeah. I'm like, I have seen 30. And he's like, what do you mean seen? I'm like, Motherfucker, they are everywhere. They are literally <laughs> everywhere. Like everywhere I want to look for a smallmouth, there is muskies. Like 
half the reason I don't even think I found as many smallmouth as usual is because there was muskies there. Because they like, got eight, it, bro. Dude, literally everywhere. And yeah. the funniest thing was uh, when we went out and Griff and I are running around on the lake during the classic, which we'll talk about later. But the funniest thing was every single spot I ran by that I looked at, I would look and be like, there's a muskie in about four feet up there. And there's mm-hmm. a musky boat out on the deep weed edge and their boats in like 15 chucking at the weeds. And I'm like, man, if they just, they just went up just a little bit more. There's, there's two of them up there. Mm-hmm. I, I saw them guarantee. They're still <laughs> there. I'm like, whatever. See ya. And then just yeah. go driving by. Yeah. So like, I would love to hear if anyone caught any muskies on Minnetonka on opener, because I'm from sure what they I did. Saw, dude. They, I'm sure they, they definitely did. People I'm sure they did. There. But from what I saw, it was hilarious. Cause just in my head, I was like, you guys are so close, but so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyways, pink, what else did you have going on after the muskie opener? Uh, let's see. So musky opener, uh, I mean, during like I got out a little bit during the week because we ended up having a, a tournament. Yeah. So how was getting back into the Bass Derby game? You fished with our camera guy from the Chronicles, Luke. I Luke did. Coming, congrats to Luke Lowy coming in off a hot streak. Buddy won the Wisco Bass down on. Was that on Green? Big, big Green. Big Green. Yeah. Yeah. Sacked like over twenty pounds on Big Green, all small. I think he. I think he had like twenty two, Honor. If you know that, right. I think it was, it was twenty one wow. and change. I think twenty one and change. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he had. He was stoked. Like I heard. I heard all about it. So I was. That was fun. Just like kind of fishing and just talking about that derby and everything. Uh, so he was fired up when I when I asked him to fish. He was like, "Absolutely, yep." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." I was like, "It's just like a little Tuesday nighter." And I was like, "The lake actually is fishing extremely awful too." So um, and he's like, "I'm in." <laughs> so and I'd been out there twice because I went there on Saturday uh, and just like dinked around in, in part of the day. And I had found some areas where I was like, "Dude, we can get bit. Like they're not big, but we can catch a bunch." You know. Mm-hmm. And it's a lake that normally fishes like deep foil. And the foil is like two feet tall right now. So it was like, yeah, not to No. So it's like everything shallow is like hella pond weed out to like six feet. And the blue eels are just shit stacked in like six to eight feet. And I was like, we ain't fishing deep. I'll tell you that right now. Plus I don't have like side imaging or not anything yet. So I was like all the spots that I normally would fish out there. I was like, I am going to be able to find these (laughs) like, yeah. So I was like, screw it. We'll just fish shallow. So well, I, went- and I know that lake too. And every, basically every rock pile on that lake or like milfoil, the rock transition is not where you would think it is. If you look at a map, no, no like you look like- at the point on her and yeah. you're like, no, oh, it should be there. But the rocks are actually like 55 yards to the left on nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it, makes, it makes no sense. But like, so multiple lakes that I went on, like in the last week were kind of the same. The water temps are insane. Like we had eight, over 80 degree water in some of the places and, uh, like all the like bluegills were trying to bed, but they're like getting cooked. So they're like suspended. So you just drive across the middle of the basin and all the bait is in like the top five feet across just the entire goddamn lake. Like it, everything's just, just like driving and it's just ripples. Of it is. It's crazy. Scattering. It's just giant schools of bluegills suspending over like 18 feet of water. So I was like, all right, well, let's just, we'll frog around. Cause that Lake, you can normally always catch some quality fish on a frog. It's just like a son of a bitch to find them. So I was like, I'm going to spend, you know, like two days trying that. So I dinked around with that. I got bit, but I was like, these are not good fish <laughs> at all. And so tournament day, I told him, I was like, well, we're going to start frogging and then we'll just see what happens. Like if we have anything good, we're just going to lock into that. If not, we're just going to be junk fishing. And literally we were the second to last boat draw on like a tiny lake. So I was like, well, we'll just take whatever's left. <laughs> so everyone goes, you could tell who pre-fished and who didn't though, because everyone ran to their deep waypoints <laughs> to like fish this foil. And then they were there for like 10 minutes and they were like, Oh, and then everyone went shit. No, there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so, feel any wheat? No. So no. I immediately, no. yeah, we go and we frog for like 20 minutes. And I was like, we do not get bit before we get to like that dock. We're gone. And we did. We literally fished that whole thing. I think we caught one like 
10 inch or something. I was like, we're out. So we fished our way out and then uh, ended up just like scrapping around on the stuff that I found on Saturday. We had a limit for probably five and a half pounds. Nice. <laughs> I was like, nice. Okay. Uh, we're in trouble for sure. <laughs> and so, dude, we end up fishing into this just dirty, shallow cesspool. And uh, on our way in, we catch one. Like Luke caught one on a chatterbait in like two feet of water. We were like sick because it was like a two pounder, which was like huge in this derby. You're yeah. like, this thing's enormous. I was like, okay, so like waypoint. <laughs> 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 and uh, so then I catch one on a spinnerbait like immediately after that. So we're like, okay, this is like maybe a thing. And we're like, we, I mean, we've caught like probably 20 or 30 bass at this point, but a lot of them are small. Yeah. And, uh, like every single one you put in the live wall and you're like, oof, cause yeah, there was a 12 inch minimum size limit. And these are like line chip. burners, potato <laughs> chips. And then, <laughs> and then you'd, and then we'd catch one to call out and you'd be like, you'd be like, Oh, just, just throw out the shortest one. So all these like 12 to 12 and a quarter inch bass we put in there are now like 11 and a half inches. They're like shrinking in the live <laughs> wall. So I was like, they must get, be getting stretched out on the hook set or something here. And, uh, <laughs> And so whatever, we're down to like the last 20 minutes and we have literally like two fish that aren't like minnows. And, uh, and we're coming across this mud flat. It is literally one foot deep. And we're, we're like, ah, let's just, that's right where we caught that other one. We proceed to call out our entire bag in probably 10 casts in a foot, 85 degree water. And it's one foot deep <laughs> and they were shit stacked. Like you'd fire a spinner bait up there and there's just wakes coming <laughs> and like, like the bluegills came back yeah. oh I don't my know god what, yeah, i don't know why they were there i have no idea because we were just like capitalizing on we just ran into this so there's like probably three or four because now we're fishing like decently close to where the ramp is so there's like a bunch of guys pulling up on the weed edge like outside of where we are just like not catching anything and we're just like oh god oh god <laughs> and there's just like, we're just like throwing fish. Like, I don't even know. So, and, and Luke's like trying to call, cause I don't have any like call beam or like even call tags or anything in the boat. So I'm just like, I don't know, just Scrambling. if it's small, just chuck it out. And, uh, so yeah, we ended up just like having, I think we had like eight and a half. We didn't even have nine pounds. It was like awful. We ended up getting sixth with eight and a half pounds. Oh jeez. So it was just an absolute grinder. I think there was like three bags in the whole tournament over 10 pounds <laughs> solid <laughs> so solid. anyway it was fun Dirty tuesday it, yeah Dirty tuesday so it was fun <laughs> to get back into it and we had a good time so it was it was all good and uh whatever we're still in it babe we didn't shit the bed no dude six or six place six so fine. but now bart's back bart uh he literally first term of the year missed it couldn't yeah, make well it. that's because she couldn't get Champions it done tour media day got blah, rescheduled blah, but blah. yeah Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so i guess uh i'll dive into what i got into this is great because we've all been gone for so long we have so much to talk about yeah. people got to be loving this um but uh so yeah ran into the minnetonka classic um i spent basically griffin and i divided up i went smallmouth fishing he went largemouth fishing and by halfway through of day three of practice I was getting vertigo from staring at sand for three days just because I would like, I'm Hunter, you know how it is. Mm. I have my trolling motor on 10, seven to 10 all day, just staring just, down, just cone vision. Like I actually day two, I was like, I should really bring my butt seat tomorrow. And then I forgot my butt seat. And I was like, this is the worst. Like I'm not even doing anything. I'm just literally trolling around in circles right now. Just hoping to find yeah. a fish someone else hasn't found well and there was a denny's on tuesday and i tell you what man those guys did work because there was not a fish over <laughs> three pounds left they were eradicated Mule. they were <laughs> eradicated they were gone um so basically going into the tournament i had found i had like 15 of them marked um i knew probably half of them were in the two pound ish class uh i didn't catch any of them i was just looking at them 
Well, I caught one of them just to get a gauge of like, okay, how, you know, yeah. make sure my gauge is right. And it was a two and three quarter. So it was actually the perfect one to catch. Cause I was like, okay, anything smaller, don't care. Anything looks the same or bigger. I'm kind of cool with it. Um, so I, uh, me and Griff go out. I had two, one was on a boot, but we got like fucking boat almost 80. I think we were both 73, oh, which is a major problem for that. Um, <laughs> and one of the big ones I wanted to start on was on a buoy and it pulled up the last day of practice. And I was like, there's no fucking way this thing's going to be there. And of course we pull up and it isn't there. I'm like, well, she's in someone's live. Well, I can virtually guarantee you that. <laughs> um, went to the next one that I had seen earlier in the week and, it was, it, it should have been a three and a quarter to a three and a half. But by the time we caught it, it was so spawned out and scrawny that it was a two and three quarters. So that was awesome. Um, and then, I mean, we went, well, and then Griff found one small mouth. And this is, I guess, kind of the most interesting part from the classic for us was, so Griff found one small mouth. Like I said, he mainly large mouth fish, but the last day, like my second day of practice, I started seeing a bunch more and that full moon was coming up. So I was telling him, I, I think more might be pulling up, but I don't really know. Um, and the next morning he spent a little bit looking and he found one. So anyways, we go to that one and I get up to his waypoint and I look at the bed and there's a moss ball in it. And I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, Griff, are you sure there was a small mouth here? And he's like, yeah. It was right there. Like, well, that's like an old bed. Like, there's not a small mouth there. Like, yeah. we can we can we can leave. Like, this does not need any more of our time. This is over. And I turned to go leave and I looked like 20 feet away. I'm like, what the fuck is that thing? And he looks up, he's like, Oh, that's it. And I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker, Griff, that is a pre-spawn female. That is not a bed fish. I'm like, mm. that is a giant. Like that's a four and a half, five pounder, like a giant pre-spawn female. Mm -hmm. And basically my theory is someone, there was a male on it probably Tuesday and someone caught it on the Denny's yep. and then like Thursday, a female, it, it pulled up. And then when he found it Friday, it was sitting on the bed, mm -hmm. like, come on, homie, where are you at? Yeah. And then it didn't show up and the moss ball rolled in and she was like, that ain't my job. And she just kind of <laughs> hung, hung around oh, in the oh. area. So anyways, we see it. I chuck at it a few times. It, whatever. It, it wasn't interested. So we move on with our day. Griff had actually found a bunch of fish deep. Um, he had found some schools out in like 10 to 18 feet. Uh, we went to the first one, didn't get bit. Got to the second one, caught a few, but nothing crazy. Then we kind of worked around and uh, we ran into the dirty water and like pink said, ran into 81 degree water. And we're like, holy shit, dude. It's so it's, stupid. It's June 3rd. Like, I have no idea where these fish are. Like, I'm looking at him like, should we just scrap practice and just start fishing like mid to end of June stuff? Like, maybe they just moved out there overnight. I don't know. But we rotate around and we're kind of slowly calling up. Like, every fish is like a 0 0.10 call. And we're just slowly going upwards. And we, uh, we go back by that small mouth that we're going back by that small mouth. And I'm like, eh, let's just look at it, go over there, not home. And I'm like, okay, this fucker's gone, whatever out of my mind. Don't even care. Go to a deep weed edge. We proceed to Griff catch a three and a quarter right away. And a three, we get up to like 16 pounds and we're like, holy shit. Like we're like a four pounder or two away from, you know, probably getting a top five because the bite's really tough. And so now we're like, okay, turn, crank up the engines. How the hell do we get a four pounder out here? Like we got a base bag now and we go back by the small mouth and I'm like, God, son of a bitch. We'll, we'll go try it. I'm, I'm just going to fish for it this time. So I pull up, I grab a hair jig and I'm like a hundred, 150 feet from it. Just chuck it down the inside sand edge. That motherfucker follows it straight to the trolling motor. <laughs> and i'm like what the and i'm like staring at it and i'm like what the hell and it like looks at me and just turns around and goes back to the weeds At this point i'm like 
okay, I'm getting you. <laughs> Grab like a half ounce drop shot and I just keep chucking it right in front of it as fast as I can, just trying to get it to react. One of the times it falls it all the way back. Once again, sitting underneath my trolling motor. <laughs> and Griff's like holding the hair, uh, hair jig. He's just been casting around, catching one pound largemouth for the last 10 minutes. And I'm like, God, dude, the gig's up. We're going to have to come back and try to catch it. Uh, and I turn to like leave. I'm like, about the only thing to eat right now is that hair jig. And he just like, eh, and just flips it out in front of the boat, like no more than 10 feet. Brings it by the fish. It spins on a dime, eats it immediately. And he sets the hook. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> turn around and grab the net, go back to net it. Hair jig flies by my face and the fish is like a foot from the net. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what just happened? You lost it. You and really cut. lost it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Griff looks at me. He's like, what, what do we do different? I'm like, nothing. That fish shouldn't have eaten. Like you could do this for the next decade. Throw a hair jig at every small mouth that you see that follows a bait to the boat. It won't eat. That fish should not have eaten that bait. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, we end up coming in and, we had upper 16s or mid 16s, something. I don't know. All I know is if we had that small mouth, we would have finished like third. But uh, <laughs> it's whatever. It, it's another Minnetonka classic. It's a fun tournament. It's just crazy how much that lake is changing every year. There's so many less weeds in it now. Um, it's really honestly surprising. I'm very curious to see what the fish do in the middle of the summer now. Um, yeah. But other than that, uh, yeah, went and filmed that podcast with Honor. That was a blast. Yeah. And then, I, honestly, just kind of, I was working all last week. I went up to Mille Lacs also, not for muskies. I was there that's for the how, champions. That's how PTB for, rolls, dude. Everyone yeah. just goes somewhere, but all at a different time. Yep. So I was up there for the uh, champions tour media day. The only thing I got out of that day was, I don't know how you guys night fished because I got to the access at five 30 in the morning and from five 30 <laughs> to six 30 was probably the worst swarm of mosquitoes I have ever seen in my goddamn oh, life. See, that's because you weren't there early enough. Yeah. Then okay. they get used to it. They yeah. get used to it. And you're like, they're like, Oh no, you're good. You, you <laughs> want You're one of them. From like, guys. from like one to want 4 AM. They're just like, we we're fine. <laughs> Back to the ramp. Let's pick on the other people. Yeah, yeah we yeah. know there's yeah no no they already have their boat cover off <laughs> we know yeah we know there's a bunch of morons rolling up to here that are sleepy that we can e easily prey on yeah i've never seen anything They're like that in my horrible. life it you was like get on two, that deep grind dude dude it was like 200 of them around you just walking around the access yeah. me and demarkey are filming and i'm like like just getting peppered <laughs> And I'm like, I don't even, what do I even do right now? Like, oh, there's nothing, nothing to do. There's nothing you can do. I had a thermocell hooked right here to my vest. It did not matter. Like, they were, I mean, it was fully cranked. I'm like, is this thing even on? Because they were just ding, 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 like everywhere. Everywhere. I don't know how you fished all night. I couldn't have done that. I would have lost my mind. They well, stop. It they... starts with a lot of bang. <laughs> and then kinda... they're 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 all show no play. Like they they show up right at prime time and then they they leave you at about like 10. <laughs> then, so they're, they're there for like 4 hours. Yeah, they're there for 4 hours. If you can if you can grind through those 4 hours, you're fine. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I I got uh like scabs on my legs basically for the rest of the week from that. So, Beauty. um, other than that, I have just been editing to be honest, just kind of been laying low. Uh, got a tournament coming up this weekend, but uh, and we got Turny Tuesday. Me and Pink nice. uh, got our first derby together tomorrow, so that'll be fun. But other than that, nothing crazy going on in my world. So. Yeah, we can kind of get rolling on with everything. That was a that was a nice quick catch up, boys. Yeah, yeah, quick hour catch up. Yeah, I like know. it. Hey, yeah, we're, hey. we're back. We're back. Hey, <laughs> we're, hey, hey what you got to do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pink. So I think next we're gonna do a little one v one. Do you got something lined up for we're me and Hunter? We're skipping that. We're skipping that. We're skipping it. Yeah, we have to. 
Okay, so you didn't get anything lined up. Absolutely not. Okay, so we're skipping that. So so let's do let's let's do the geared up one now though. Okay, we can do geared up. Let's get into that. Okay, because uh, we we have we've haven't done this one in a while. Okay. Yeah. Think. Do you want to lead this off, or what are you thinking? Uh, I can. I have I have two that are semi related. So I'm just gonna bang them both out because it's easy. Okay. Uh, so one, Bart's not gonna like this, but this is a shameless plug, uh, for a uh, bait that I think is quite good. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because, oh sorry, Bart, you you got me going on these tonight, so I had to. I had to. So this is a, a bait that I actually make. You motherfucker. I better get my delivery tomorrow. <laughs> this is, you, you might. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. This is a pass the barb exclusive, dude. People got to, they got to listen to, uh, to get in involved here. They're $30 a pop now, by the way. <laughs> We're not even going to discuss that because I can't, <laughs> I can't even keep up, but basically I make these hair jigs, uh, that, are actually pretty damn good, Bart. I think you can you can speak to this because you actually yes. use them and you're unbiased because you don't make them. No, uh, I but, bought a lot of other generic ones because I've ran out of yours before and I've been like, man, I hate this. So I will say not to just be like, oh, whatever. So that's like a, a what it's good, like a chicken style jig, right? So, yeah. Um, it's like a probably about a seven inch ish bait uh kind of like an offshore largemouth type thing um but if you haven't fished like a jig like this before i will say like i've been making them for a while now and i feel like i've got it pretty dialed uh but i would say of this type of jig i've checked out some other ones it's probably one of the better tied ones of this type of jig yes and it, it falls com it falls and swims completely different than the other ones yeah hunter i don't know you don't have any of these do you i don't have any of yours but okay. you're, if you're talking like a preacher jig type style yeah. like uh, i know yep. what you're talking about bad boy right yep okay yep. Ooh, so daddy, like so anyway, I'll just like this type like i said i've i've looked i haven't seen them if all if you're not I've watching on youtube through. watch yeah. on youtube if you're not looking on YouTube, here it is. Nice bait fishy type thing. Got some stuff going on there. So I've messed with a different, couple different materials or whatever. Uh, Bart's, Bart had some of the old ones that weren't that good. Uh, this one is considerably better than kind of some of the older stuff from a couple of years ago. And uh, I don't know, Bart, you tried some of the old ones. And I mean, obviously the, the jig and hook that we got now is unreal. Yeah, I mean the older ones just fell so fast. I mean they still work. They great. were less honestly. Bulky. They just they got snagged twenty four seven. Yeah, it's a different um, like jig style and the whole thing. But anyway, this like preacher jig, whatever you want to call it, chicken, uh, it slays fish, dude. Like, and not just largies either. I've caught like a ton of smallies on yeah. it. Pike and muskies love them too. Uh, a little too much, but um, anyways, I do make these. I don't really advertise that much because i can't even keep up with the people that i time for anyway but uh if you're interested in something like this at least or even try just like the regular chicken ones too i mean they're like solid jigs but uh these ones definitely don't fall apart ever unless you like lose them basically doggo yeah that's the only thing i've gotten a dog fish that's the only one that's beaten one yeah well now i know more glue yeah, well, I don't think you're gonna beat a dogfish, man. Yeah. Anyways, so uh those type of jigs are gonna come into play pretty quick here, I think, especially with how hot the water's getting. So the thing yes. that goes with that, this is kind of my number two. So there is I this is like a generic box. The one that I have is a clam one. Um, but this box, it's like I think they it's sold for an ice fishing thing. But I, this is where I put all of my heads in that I tie on. Like, you could obviously put already tied ones in here. But you could probably put, like, flipping jigs or walleye jigs in here, too. I have right now. I counted before this just so I could say it. There is, there's 125 
half and three quarter ounce jigs in this box currently. So that is I think incredible. If yeah. they and there's still empty <clears throat> spots like on some of them, so you could probably fit close to 150 ish like open hook jigs in there. So, uh, like the clam makes this one, but there's if you look around for like a double sided jig or fly box, this type of thing, uh, they're really sick. And I have like probably four of them now, and I put some of them in my boat to pretty much hold like all my different jigs and stuff, but they're sweet for holding uh they're like really nice for small hair jigs too yes yes but they yep. hold the big ones perfectly good yeah. too they just don't hold as many but yeah for like marabou like small small yeah. jigs and stuff um definitely worthwhile like to check those out because i think will had talked about some that were um kind of like those cliff boxes we talked about those one yep. time it's kind of like that but I, these ones are a little more robust and uh your stuff doesn't like it won't fall out if you're banging it around in the boat like if you're running mm -hmm. Because some of the other ones, like the the heavier heads, it'll just like fall out of there over time. But right. Anyway, I found that to be super helpful, and I've been using those for like a couple of years now, and I really like them. So, but yeah, I'm surprised at how much it holds because this box probably weighs like ten pounds <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with all this stuff. In it. But anyway, what do you got? That's a good one, Honor. Honestly, I think uh, after fishing in my buddy's boat, this is for. This is kind of aimed towards musky anglers or said like after after dark, just fishermen in general mm -hmm. is um, attaching green lights to your boat. And all it is, is a very cheap um, LED strip and it's got an adhesive on the front side. So all you do is you place it underneath your gunnel and stick it on the side and the big scary part is you do have to drill a small hole in your boat to fit the wire through and connect it to your battery. But once you have that, you have a perfect seeing platform in front of your boat and it like makes night fishing so much more enjoyable. You can see what's going on. You can see your bait. You're not like zoning out because you can't like, you're not, you're just like going through the motions. You can actually like visualize what is happening. And I would say having those green lights in your boat, because it's still not like a big popular thing in musky fishing, which is weird to me because it's so such an advantage. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that is that has been like such a pleasure every time I get into his get into his boat is like having those green lights on during night fishing because he loves to night fish. Well, so, and I think cause he showed me at the ramp that night, too, because he had yeah. it on. Because mm -hmm. he's got it set up on, like, a dimmer, too, which was pretty sick. Yep, yep. And yep. I and like that. And that's – it's super easy to rig up. I mean, yeah, Cooter Electric right here. But – Dude, like, straight um, up, I'm gonna I'm doing that on my boat. Dude, like, I, I saw I, it and have, I was like, that is so easy. Some of the, some of the biggest musky, like, fishermen idols that are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, green lights. And it came from a guy in the Wasa area who I consider, no joke, like an Aaron Martins of musky fishing. Yeah. And he's like, no one would have ever known who this guy is, but I've fished with him many times. I grew up with him. Um, his name's Andy, Andy Grimm. And the guy is an absolute wizard, a savant of like teetering and twi like tweaking things and making everything perfect. And the guy had him on his boat. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is the coolest shit ever. And the fish do not care. They will figure eight perfectly. And sometimes you're almost going too fast in the figure eight because you can see your bait. But the <laughs> fish have no idea where the fate, where the bait is. They like lose it. So it is it is an absolute. It is so much fun and such an advantage when you're night fishing. Like I would highly suggest it if you're an avid night fisherman to add those to your boat. Yeah, that's a good I one. agree. Like I said, I I hadn't seen anybody that like had them set up. Like I've seen where people had like the bow lights kind of integrated into the rail, mm -hmm. which is really like the same thing. It's just that it, they're on it the, basically is. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, dude, that looks super easy. Especially if you did that, you already have the hole for the wire anyway. Right. Just like right. shove two through there. Call yeah. Day. And just like it's the perfect amount to be able to like see what's going on at your feet. Like you know those times where you think you saw a fish, 
mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I think I saw one. But then when you actually see one, you're like, oh no, oh, I, de- I actually, definitely, did. Yeah. I, 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 have, <laughs> I definitely did not see a fish. <laughs> mm-hmm. They show up that well, and they do not care about the lights whatsoever. It's so sweet. It's really cool. That's my that's my gear tip. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm going to bring one up. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I've added something else to it in case. But I wanted to talk about it. Glass, because... I'm going to leave. Nope. Graph glass. <laughs> we, we already talked about that. That was our one that we were like, this sucks. Um, no, I'm going to talk about. So the Plano Edge series, uh, the 3700 deep box. Mm-hmm. Um, you see a bunch of elite series guys and like tour guys doing it now for their hook storage. I have been doing that this year. It is the best. Uh, It has saved my life. So basically what you do is if you look up the Plano Edge series, it's those big Plano yellow boxes that they're super expensive. They cost like $30. However, it keeps water out and everything. And you get the deep one because what you can do is any new bag of hooks you get, you know, the five or 10 pack or whatever they are of Gamagatsu's, uh, or owners, whatever you get, um, you can fit them in there sideways. So what I have is is the top part of the box is all my new hooks, and I just keep them in the pack, put them in there. And then what I have is, and this is stupid simple, but you can go to Amazon, and they're the clear plastic reclosable bags. They're like 2.75 inches long, inch and a half wide. They cost like $3. Um, you take some of those. I have some of the smaller ones too for smaller hooks. But you take some of those. And what I did is I have like an old, say an old Gamagatsu pack of Superline 4 aught EWGs, whatever. I'll take it out of the pack and write old on it. And you just put that in there. And if you use the hook in practice or whatever... Mm-hmm. it's been used in a tournament you can just slide it into that box um then you just like dude honestly it's the best because you know you're tying on fresh hooks derby yes. day and then yeah. you're just grabbing ones for practice that you're like whatever i don't care and it keeps everything so organized you don't have hooks flying everywhere they're not you don't hit a wave and they're sprayed out all over your boat mm-hmm. it's just it's honestly the best and it's so simple but that's the best way I found to store hooks, and I highly recommend it. And it's the Plano Edge. Those are the gray and yellow ones? Yeah, they're the gray and yellow ones. Yeah, um, yeah Plano Edge series. I just looked them up to make sure. Stowaway, 3,700 deep. Yeah, it shields their 30 bucks right now. That's not but, bad if they're that yeah. all that. They're very worth it. And I will. I did get some of their uh, – I got some of their jig ones, too uh for this year to try out and i've been a big fan of those too is that the one with all the little sticks yeah they got a bunch of little (laughs) sticks and Mm -hmm. dude when you first put them in you're like there is no fucking way that this jig is staying here and i've only had one jig come out of place all year really and i'm like how like it doesn't but you can get a lot in there yeah oh yeah for sure because i carry way too much tackle Holler oh, yeah, can sure. definitely attest to that, mm. and you'll see that tomorrow, Pink. I carry way too much tackle. And, uh, yeah, fits all mine. So I definitely uh, – I've been a huge fan of them. They've, they've been great. Sick. Okay, and that's your segment of uh, Geared Up. So what we will move into now is uh, what in the world is going on. So we're going to talk about some of the current events that have been going on just in the world or the outdoors world in general. Um, first one I'm going to bring up, because I know Honor probably saw this and paid attention to it. How right. did Live in the PGA Tour merge? That was that was going to be mine, but... <laughs> That's okay. Man, It'll be a mutual People one. were pissed, it sounded Man. like. Oh, I think yeah. a lot of people are well, pissed. Well, yeah. People that weren't already in live, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I like imagine I getting a- offered a hundred million dollars last year and being like, I'm gonna be loyal to the PGA tour because they're telling me to be loyal. <laughs> and, and then the next year the PGA tour takes the money and looks at you and's like, sorry, money talks. And you're like, yeah. What the <laughs> fuck? I just missed out on a hundred million guaranteed like, so, generational oh. wealth. 
And then uh, it, it was so funny. There's a quote by, uh, what is his name? Jay, I don't know, the commissioner of the PGA. He's like, yeah. PGA tour players will, will not, they're like, they will, they will make fistfuls more than the live, the live tour guys have ever made in their life. I'm like, what? Uh, no, no, <laughs> I don't think so. I do not think so. Like, you're not going to be able to come up with literally $2 billion to, to pay all these guys to overcome what they've lost. Like, I, I think it's it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. Well, yeah. and that place is what? that's That live golf is like Saudi Arabia or something? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. it's a Saudi, like, public fund or whatever that funds it and, like, it's like, very, like oil money, probably. Or whatever. It's very yeah, controversial, it's, like in terms of is it terrorist money? You know, um, you have like I mean, probably. I mean, you have the wealthiest people in the world list, say like like Amazon, Elon Musk, but then there's like an outlier of the Saudi money, which mm -hmm. is they don't even include because it's so much it, more because it's like <laughs> ten trillion. Not not billion, it's trillions of dollars that they have. And they're like, ah, look at these peasants over in the USA. Ah, you go. Ah, <laughs> let's flounder play, around with this. Play heard... golf for me, fool. <laughs> Hit it again. Hit it again. <laughs> <laughs> Slice. Here's 50 mil. Hit it again. <laughs> oh my play God. punk rock. That'll be funny. <laughs> Watch oh this. God. Wear shorts Ed, in a golf event. <laughs> add, add dancers to the dancing monkeys out there. <laughs> Hilarious. But yeah, no, it's it's crazy with that merger. And uh, I just, I'm curious. I, I was listening to a few podcasts about it. And I'm yep. very curious to see if a precedent is set for now, if they go to like, the nba or the nfl or the nhl because or anything like that because they, like the pga open like it's one of those things where people are like don't open the door just don't open the door mm -hmm. and although this would door, be super good for bass fishing well i heard a <laughs> yeah if they got into bass fishing i you know. i yeah, Saudi all of a sudden has like four <laughs> forty five pound largemouth in it that they genetically like bought from Russia. They're like, paying, up they're in, paying like, the payouts theory. would be incredible. They they're were paying bass genetic, bass genetically engineered in some basement in Siberia. They're like, like grouper. <laughs> they're Just paying Bassmaster <laughs> one mil an event. Could you imagine the fist fights that would be going down it on the ledges amazing. now? Amazing. One mil, they're paying like Instead of 100K, you get like 125K. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Brawl. Brawl. <laughs> you got Lee Livesey just fucking punching people out over a bush light. It would be. <laughs> oh, dude. It would. Yeah. But that. I'll, so it made me think of going to over to the bass fishing side. And it was going to be the other current event I was going to bring up. So this kind of comes full circle. But. um would this like with the live thing when the live split from the PGA it reminded me a lot of the bass MLF split. Uh, there's been a lot of similar parallels other than uh, live can actually come up with all the money they said they were going to give them compared to maybe MLF. I, mm -hmm. I don't really know about that side, but um, there's been a lot of parallels there. W could we ever see a merger like that? Yeah. I think so too. And it just like opens that door of like, could yeah. that come back and how pissed off would people be? See, I always, I always find it really funny. Like, cause in, in smaller forms of like loyalty with companies and, and stuff like that, where someone copies someone or pisses someone off, like just give it a couple of weeks. It'll blow right over. They won't even yeah. know what happened. They just go on with their life and they're, they're 
I'm never watching the PGA Tour ever again. And there you are on Sunday until, at it's, your, on until it's on, and then you're watching it again. Yeah, like, guess what? The, the British Open's coming up, and people are going to be well, watching. Oh well, yeah, well, it's the British Open. Yeah, like no, it, it'd be it would be the same thing with bass fishing. Like people would be pissed off for a quick minute, mm -hmm. and then it, they'd move on with their lives. It's it, it's the same thing. It, you're right. Know. Like, it, people am get I wrong? over it quick because yeah, otherwise it, they're just like, I'm not gonna watch. Yeah. No, you're gonna you're watch because you're it. You're you're addicted to the sport, so mm -hmm. you're you're you have to. You're gonna watch it. No, yeah. no. Like, I think people would. Like I said, like the the people who are devout, I will absolutely like this Biden administration, like those those type of people would they'd come right back <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no for sure and uh yeah so that was a very interesting thing that happened i'm intrigued to see how all that unfolds over the coming uh yeah. months it, and years i mean but, that'll be the the stepping point for a lot of sports i think yes it'll it's going to be very interesting but with that bringing up the mlf merger or whatever but with mlf mlf just had an event on cayuga huh. um, <laughs> the weights were outrageous because cayuga's off limits to what i know it's catch and release right mm -hmm. now so they're able to have their catch weight release format however smallmouth are spawning and i don't know what the rule in mlf is about this but I just personally have a very big issue with an event like like I don't have an issue necessarily with a spawning event that but they it happens, but they catch and release avoid it. but it's catch and release and uh, it's not it's I, not bad for the fishery dude they catch and release. I just want to know how many uh, how many times a guy caught the same six pounder each day to well, weigh well they in they release pounds. it they release it yeah so it's not bad for the fishery. I don't know what you're talking about. They don't weigh it in. It's yeah, it's true, 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 true. Just parking on a bed fish and catching it like four times. I have 30 pounds. Yeah. No, it, that's that's fine. <laughs> like, like, it was in the mouth, dude. Yeah, well, and that's a whole other <laughs> thing. There's some clips going it was around in the of mouth. some fish that probably were definitely not caught in the mouth. Yeah, I, that's an uh, ongoing trend with MLF right now is watching butt mouth fish getting caught. And when I say butt mouth, I mean... They ate it out of their butt because they hooked <laughs> them in the butt. Um, the, the best is when somebody snags one and it just happens to be in the mouth because they're so psyched when they get in their boat. They pull it in and they're like, it's in the mouth, dude. Look at it. Look at it. You see <laughs> it? You see it? <laughs> and then, the, like, the people who know it, know it was hooked, like, don't even show it. They're like, <laughs> put it on the thing. They're like, yeah. These are, these, these are like the guys that just make up the group even though they're not like the person yeah, or yeah. the like MLF is focused on like five people you know like all right get, get the hell get, get off the camera get off the camera get, get yeah. the hell out of that get, all right four pounds all right let's go back to the six six point eight pounder that he's trying to catch again all right well his back's turned and he is setting the hook and it's in the cheek all right <laughs> <laughs> like well, have you, have you heard of that, like, flossing, how they catch those salmon? The ones that are, like, yeah. like they don't yeah. eat or whatever? Oh, they, I've, yeah. I've filmed it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I feel like that's, like, a technique that's coming into bass fishing pretty hard right now. Mm -hmm. Like, that they're just, like, feathering it till it's, like, oh, yeah, it's right on his lip. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah there. He ate it. <laughs> one, one of the craziest <laughs> snagging stories that I've ever heard was a guy would take um, – I. If it wasn't on the Red River, it was on kind of another shithole place mm -hmm. like this. But he would take these five pound bass and hook their gill to like six pound mono. So they could they couldn't tech like get away from it, but he would take braid with a crankbait mm -hmm. on these stumps and he'd feel the line get really, really close. And he'd feel it, and he'd like work the crankbait down to where the fish was, and just snap it on. as hard as he could. And he was bringing in like twenty five pounds and blowing the doors off of tournaments. It was, and he 
He did. He wasn't. You won't for even years. believe the bite I'm on. Years yeah. and years and Deep years and cranking. <laughs> and dude, like it, it took years for this guy to get caught. And then uh, finally, like the locals set up a stakeout, and they're like, "Yeah, they found the fish connected to like four to six pound mono, like." through the gill, out the gill, and then tied a knot. So it would ride right down their gill, and he'd hook them right underneath their cheek. Insane. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, the effort that you put that into, like, cheating, you think mm-hmm. you'd get good at, you know, fishing. but Just yeah. catching them in general. Yeah. 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 But, no, with that event, it's just, that, like I said, I, I mean – I don't know exactly what went down or whatever there, but there's definitely fish that were caught multiple times a day. Some by the same anglers, some caught by different anglers. And I just don't get how you could be like, oh, these guys are getting to near 100 pounds in four days. And it's like, dude, they've caught like seven <laughs> fish. Yeah, just over and over. They just caught the same seven fish over and over and over again. Like, what are we talking Ultimate about? Fishery. Like we can see the background. It's the yeah. same fucking fish. Same well, fish. hey, it should make the people happy that are like, well, it wasn't a live scope event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, trust me, they're all pissed off now because they have late. floggers. And apparently floggers are the worst thing in the world now, too. It's like 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 we talked about with Chapman during the podcast. You think floggers yeah. are that bad, you go do it all day. Tell me how much fun you had because well, it is it's not a lot very of effort, enjoyable. Like to do that too. Oh, it's dude, not yeah, like just it's looking at a screen. Physically taxing. It yeah. sucks. One of the most about floggers I know, like one of my good friends, AJ, like he's a bigger dude. Like, I don't know, upper 200 pounds for mm-hmm. his, his stature. And he is on his stomach when it's a season. And like, I remember a Champlain event. He sat there through five foot waves <laughs> all day long. And I looked at his face, and it's a perfect <laughs> image of the cone. And there's a mark on his stomach Just from the gunnel. Pounded into his face. Like, how was that? He's like, oh. I'm on him. If I get, he's like, I found three today that I don't think anybody's going to have. <laughs> like, was it worth it? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah basically that's when you're like well if i get all three but then it, the best is when you roll out and there's three people already catching them and you're like yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna off myself <laughs> like this is like, awful like he would make a top 10 every event on champ played but oh my god was it worth it i don't i guess yeah. maybe yeah for sure uh current event wise what in the world's going on hunter you had the live thing did you have anything else I I did have a live thing. Um that was kind of my that was kind of my ace in the hole, but I figured you'd you'd pick it up. Um No, you're good. You're good. I brought up two. So there we go. Pink, what do you got? Um so I got that one I don't know if you got I was I'm pissed that Will wasn't here for this one cuz I'm this is this is some Montana action. Uh so I don't know if you guys heard about this or not. It was like uh uh, a guide in Montana that got attacked by like a grizz or whatever. Did you hear about this? No. no. So it was, I guess, uh, like a female guide who was just like, like, co- well, I don't know. They call it cowboy camping, but just like literally just like sleeping on the ground, <laughs> like no shelter or anything. Hmm. And uh, so basically, and- you just went and slept on the like. Like no tent or big bag on the ground. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So just and like, we just came up with a term for homeless. That's yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. So this Cowboy is about camping. this is about women. I like it actually. The um, whole city of Portland does that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, but so yeah, this was. I'm trying to remember. I'm gonna try to pull it up quick because I trying to remember where it was by. I think it was like near. I don't want to get this wrong. Uh, blah, blah, blah. but anyway, attacked by Grizz. Uh, but she didn't um didn't die, which is you know good. Um, killing time, killing time, killing time. Killing time. It's time. surprising how hard it would be to actually find this information now that I actually want it, even though somebody got like et by a bear. 
Uh, God damn it. Just killing the podcast. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. Where's Will when you need him? Anyway. This is all Will's I got it. I got it. God damn it, Will. All right. So this was on. Bum. Go ahead. This was on the Flathead River is where it went down. Um, but yeah, so this was, and this was like literally last week, like it just happened. Um, but yeah, apparently, uh, this bear attacked this chick and while she was just like camped and I guess she was like alone, but the biggest thing was that she had, uh, deployed bear spray. So I know people talk about that a lot instead of like using like a pistol or something that's like, Oh, bear spray is the deal. Well, basically sounds like this bear spray didn't do shit and like the bear still like attacked her. So. Uh, is deployed. say what you will about bear spray. I don't Wait, know. you're saying she deployed bear spray? Like she sprayed it. Okay. Bear. I thought the way you yeah, said that and the way that. I heard it, she had little landmines of bear spray out. And I was like, <laughs> that's a thing? No, no, no. Because <laughs> could you imagine if you forgot one and someone else is just walking <laughs> through the woods? But there's just there's just, <laughs> just, just fucking landmines out there. People are just getting mace in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I left it here. Fuck. No, it's like a. Ca- Have you not seen this shit? Like, the- yes, I've seen it. Yes, no, <laughs> I, yeah. I just thought the way you said it that I interpreted it as she had landmines and bear spray out, and I was like, this isn't damn. this isn't cod. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool concept. Yeah, but you so just said bear spray doesn't work. So. Well, I, I don't think it. I mean, it I don't has, think my it concept has worked. would work either. It has worked, but apparently this did not work in this situation. So, uh, anyway, that was, I, you don't hear about too many of that, especially like to like professionals, you know, in the outdoor world where people get, you know, moderately add on by a bear. Does this, is this a weird time of year for this to happen to? I feel like this uh, happens more in the fall. It happens that in just because sp- more well, people. Well, it out. happens in the spring often because there's cubs involved. Oh yeah, I suppose. So I think that was maybe this situation, um, but like it wasn't like fatal, obviously. So like then they don't care about the store anymore. They're just like, oh, this person got attacked by bear. Like, eh, well, she's fine. So and then you don't like hear anything about it. If they would have died, mm-hmm. they'd have been like, we're like, you know, actively like hunting yeah. this and like shit like that. So, uh, yeah, but it was. Uh, so they said they're doing an investigation, but I don't really know what that even like. You hear about that, but like, what? what it's that getting what shuffled that? off the, the side. They of the we're in, we're the bear. investigating. You know, we're investigating. interrogating the bear. So, what did you think she was? She's like, I never seen that chick in my life. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So it said non life threatening injuries. So whatever that means. So I'll have to ask Will next time I see him if he knows this chick. There we go. I'm assuming it was a fly fishing guide. They didn't specify, but. Okay. I got you. Well, that brings us to uh, our final segment for the night. And that is going to be a good old weigh in uh, for people who are maybe new to the podcast or we haven't done this one in a while. Uh, this is where we go snake draft style, select uh, four items or things or whatever it is to create a team we put a graphic up later and there's a winner decided today's weigh-in is pink what is the topic we decided so this weigh-in is going to be worst types of boaters and we're we're leaving it broad enough that it can be pretty much the worst type of like anything boating related that's a person this yeah this could get aggressive can I can um, I add something here? I would I would say we we can't like jet skis like we we can't just knock that right off the table. We got to be a little, yeah. little into it. Like <laughs> yeah yeah. Jet skis. I, I think, it, it has to be moderately think, specific. You can't just out an entire group. I think oh, I, I think you could skis. say something oh, yeah, like that, but then it leaves a door open for a particular scenario. Okay, let's yes. just start with this blanket statement. 
fuck the jet ski people. Yeah. Okay. Let's just start there. Okay. <laughs> yes. So now anything beyond that, wide open. Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. So how are we going to, you guys decide how we're going to do this draft. I'm going to go grab a bush light quick. All right. As in order. Okay. I... So Bart's in the middle. Mm-hmm. Pretty much what I've decided at this point because he yeah. left. Yeah. So I guess after that, I don't really care. So uh, how do we want to draw for the first one here? This is this is a tough decision. Do you uh, like a coin or something? I have. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. T- okay. Yeah. I'll take the Cope logo. You got the bottom. All right. Letterbach. Where are we? This is official. This is official. Son of a bitch. All right, what do you want? I'm going to take back end. I'm okay. going to take back end. All right, so I got to lead it off. Bart, you're in the middle. Sorry. Okay. We decided that through a very rigorous uh, rank. Choice. A very, yeah. very hard. It, it was detailed. We thought you were going to get the lead off, honestly. Really honestly, know. yeah. It was a two-sided, uh, three-sided coin. And you <laughs> What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All All right. right. Pinky, lead it off. Wow. I didn't think there was going to be so much pressure on this first one. I feel like. It's a biggie. But there's a lot of good. God damn it. All right. Um, All right. I'm just taking this one. I'm taking. This is not a good lead off. Fuck it. All right. So. (laughs) I love so much doubt immediately. I, it is. I mean, like, I know it's good, but it's not a one-one. God damn it. All right. I'm fuck it. Okay. So this one, uh this is the guy with the the, the captain's hat guy. <laughs> okay. Probably in a bay liner, no doubt. A bay liner? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go out on a limb right now and say if you have a captain's hat on. You don't know how to drive a boat, period. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got the look, god damn it. But god damn does he got the look. So uh yeah, and this typically like more prevalent from like uh July one to mm-hmm. uh July, July. five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely seasonal, but like, dude, that. It's literally like the biggest, like, yep, I'm definitely going to ruin everything that's happening on this lake right now kind of moment. Yes. So yes. that's my one of one captain tag guy. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm going to go a different way. I thought this was going to be one one. So I, I'm happy it is here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take, um, I guess I don't know exactly what the verbiage would be for the graphic. Mm-hmm. But we all have ran into this, especially if you uh, go anywhere in the metro or cabin country. It is the person who gets their boat ready to launch in the access. Ooh. Like on the ramp, you're talking. On the ramp. Yeah. Yes. Um, that person. And that, like, we can do it. Is, it's fine because it takes like 20 seconds. So we think. But yeah. that guy. That's yeah. the like you 15, watch the whole like, minutes he in. hops out and like stretches a little bit, and then you watch six kids and the wife pop out and start putting on sunscreen, and you're like, oh the, fuck. The cool and there's and there's life jackets laying on the ground. Still. The boat the boat covers <laughs> the still cover on. the boat covers on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is my space now. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Exactly. And it's a two-lane ramp, but I mean it's one yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I don't. What do I, what do I put that down for the graphic? Is that just that's up to you, man? Prep, prep the boat. Prep, guy, uh, prep, <laughs> prep in the boat launch guy. That'll sure. work. <laughs> That'll, yikes! I I feel like I'm I'm <laughs> being delivered just like goods on a platter here. Like yeah, th- this yeah. one, this one. Is just not even creative. It's just known. Just take that low hanging fruit, bro. <sighs> Wakeboard boats, dude. Wake uh, surfing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, where where are our heads at here? 
I, mm-hmm. I feel like I didn't even want to pick that one up. It was so easy. Do I, I just got, have Wake Surfer written down? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be easy money. That's easy money. Like, yeah, it could be it could be a no wake zone, and people are pissed off that we're we're going seventy five miles per hour, creating a two inch wake, but then there's some dude rolling coal with the ballast filled all the way to the bottom, creating a ten five foot footers curve. Bro. And yeah. every time they go by, you hear hip hop music from six yes. years ago. Yes. Yeah. Precisely six years ago. Yes. <laughs> yep. It was just when they ended college, or it's like 15 years ago when they ended high school. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They're on the claws, bro. Like if you hear little little Wayne playing, you're like, oh God, this guy wears white, white frame sunglasses. Oh, <laughs> No, this dude! All of a sudden, sucks. I hear, and I liked him back in the day. But all of a sudden, I hear G Easy on a lake, and I'm like, yeah. "Fuck, dude! To load it up, we gotta go." Fuck me, I get some money. <laughs> Fuck me, I get some money, and you're like, "Oh no! Oh, this guy sucks. This, <laughs> this guy sucks. <laughs> this guy." <sucks. laughs> Oh, all right, oh Hunter. God. What's the next one? That that was a layup. That was, I'm yeah, surprised. that's a layup. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A, I, I like that it was like disappointing it, for you to say it. Though. It was. Yeah. it was. I'm like, yeah. come on, boys. I, I do have something there, but like, we'll see eventually. We'll see uh, how deep. We'll, we'll, we'll let it get rowdy in yeah. the middle. Yeah. 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 All right. So my my next pick um, are the. <laughs> This is also July 4th, Memorial Day, Labor Day weekend, people. It yeah. is going for a pontoon ride around the lake, but they decide that they're going to use the entire shoreline regardless oh, of the depth. If you, you know, yes. the depth or <laughs> you, where your bait is landing on said shoreline. You yes. could be 20 feet away from that shoreline. They come. We're going between. They're going between. And interrupting. In fact, I have seen a friend of mine who uses a, a two pound bulldog without hooks on it to scare off said pontooners. <laughs> He'll lob that son of a bitch. And I've, I've seen almost outboards taken off their boats from that <laughs> two pound boat bulldog. <laughs> I like it. The people that come in between you and the shoreline after you're like flipping a tree. That you're on shore. Yeah. You're on shore, and they're exploring <laughs> the lake, so you're in their way. They're like, and then they wave. They're like, yeah, like ninety ninety percent of the people <laughs> yeah. wave, and then the captain <laughs> is like, what you said, Bart. Just yeah, yeah. On. Well, he's got to have both hands on the wheel, so while yes. he's grinding his skag on the bottom, he can keep yep. control. <laughs> yeah, he's wondering why it's so hard to turn. <laughs> It was really bumpy around here. <laughs> no, that's good. That's yeah. good. Oh God. All right. All right. Um, I, I will see if this is acceptable because this goes off of Wake Surfer. Mm-hmm. I know Cody took the generic term, but this is this is mine because I was going to say this is what it is. Mine is named the Weed Line Wake Surfer. And it is for no apparent we'll reason. Allow it. They are right on the fucking weed line. Mm-hmm. And guess what? That's their, they're going that way and you're fishing it. And they're, instead of them being like, you know what? I'll turn around. They're like, I'm just going to go right by them. And they're like <laughs> 20 feet from you. And you just look at your guy and you're like, uh, get to the back. Like, yeah, yeah, that, dude, that <laughs> happens to me several times on Tonka a year where like you watch them go by and I'm like, and hey, I'll go back here now. And you just go to the back deck and you still take one over the front coming back down because those <laughs> things are so insane. Oh, but like that it. is mine. Yeah, it is the weed that. line wake surfer because I do hate wake surfers, but I'm like, there's some of them out in the middle of the lake and you're like, at least they're out there. Yeah. Mine is particularly, I have a fight with the weed line wake surfer. And even Fuck though them. they don't have a graph, they managed to find the weed line yes. perfectly. 
Fuck with Gina. It is get some uncanny, money. dude. Like, if you want to know a weed Fuck line on Tonka, all the wake surfers, man, they got it dialed. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Pink. All right. Uh, all right, I'm going. I got a good. I got a clever name for this one. So I. Uh, this this is this is a Fourth of July special here. So this is a. Uh, it's all it's 100 always on a pontoon boat as well i'm calling this one <laughs> i I'm love calling, just, uh, you're so confident i'm so i'm calling this one dock line daisy and <laughs> oh fuck this might be one of mine <laughs> so this is like this is guaranteed if you're on a lake that has a bar that is on the water that has a dock this is happening fourth of july i think no. this was gonna get taken this fast so this is always this is the most sunburntest, most drunkest chick on the boat that always feels the need to stand right on the bow as they're coming into the dock with a driver, likely wearing a captain's fucking hat, coming into this dock hot. Okay. <laughs> and she and she's holding 20 feet of dock line, just waiting to jump. Cause she can't just wait. She's got to jump. Yeah. And it's inevitable. She's going in. <laughs> She is not making it on the dock. There is not a fucking chance. <laughs> and and it's the best because ev- now everyone gets to the front because they want to help. So now we're plowing. The, the boat is plowing water coming into the dock. And right at the last minute when Daisy's about to make that leap, you know he's putting her in reverse. And he's he putting that boat in. Any, he can't grab any water because all the people are in the front. So the it just prop goes, ain't even in the water, bro. <laughs> Propping. and what what's she doing she's going for it inevitably <laughs> she's taking that dock right on the rib cage for sure <laughs> you got you got the waitresses helping her back onto the dock now now they got to try to retrieve the dock line because the boat's now sideways in between all of the docks crashing into all the other boats and whose fault is it daisy daisy's fault dock line daisy <laughs> 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 it's a beautiful thing to watch to be fully honest and the best thing about that scenario is before they're even 50 feet from the dock you already know how it's going to play out they're, yeah you've seen it hundreds of times because she's standing she's standing on the bow way they're not even they're still coming across the lake and she's like no i got it i got it i got it yeah <laughs> i've been prepping my whole life for this <laughs> oh my god all right pink you're back to back all right, so this, oh, I think I might, who am I going back to the access here? I think I might be. Oh, boy. I think so, because I don't think my last one's going to get picked. So, uh, so this one, this is, this is the team backup. So this is, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. So this is all it, I mean, sometimes it's a family, but it's usually just a guy and like his wife, girlfriend, whatever. And and the guy always takes a stab at it here because he's the man, obviously. Yes. Yeah. He's good. He's gonna back this boat in. Now, it's always on like, I I feel like the holidays are like the Super Bowl of recreational boating. Yes. Like you know, Fourth of July, Memorial Day, Labor, all the high holidays. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, but this is the first time they've been out all year. And this is his one chance. This is his shot, and he needs to show his prowess. Of backing this vessel <laughs> into the water, which always they get about halfway. She's pretty jackknifed. He could ask for help, but he's too proud. Absolutely of that. not. So he's going to take a stab over correct. Now we're jackknifed the other way. So now we're de- we're going to get out. Doors are open. We're going to have a conference now. She's behind, yelling, waving her arms. Been doing that for five minutes, and now they got to they got to talk about it. See what's going on. He's he's pissed now. Cause she's telling him how to back this boat in. And the Absolutely ramp is not. definitely curved. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Nice, nice, about 45 degree angle coming off there, off the car lane. Ain't, and, no, ain't no way. No, no. And she's telling him, turn, turn it to the left more. Turn, turn it to the left. And he's like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. So then he'll take what? Two, three stabs at it. Now she's, now she's in the driver's seat. Doors are all open. She's in the drive. Another, let's huddle up. Let's talk about this. There is 30 boats in line here. I, this, if you want to see this plays a out. divorce happen in oh. live, 
live stream, you just go to a boat landing in Wisconsin around Memorial Day, July 4th, you will watch the divorce papers be printed out. <laughs> Gra- Gray's Bay. Lake or Minnetonka. that too. That That's a good one. But yeah, these, I, it's like, and wh- I don't even know what these people talk about. I see them huddle up. They get together. They discuss the scenario. I have never actually heard this unfold as to what speculation there is as to why the boat is not ending up in the lake. Well, I mean, it's a short trailer, so it jacked us a little harder. And, you know, <laughs> I can't see with the mirrors and stuff. It was like, well, if I didn't have this truck, you know, I, <laughs> I, yeah, you almost want to help these people, mm. but the the entertainment value. You can't. You of, cannot. Like you could, you could, you could voice your opinion. But I think I know how to. It. I think I know how to launch my own boat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I got my that. mistake. You're right. You're right. This is. Yeah, no. You. I, I will say. Minutes. I will say to piggyback on that pink. There has been a handful of times on Minnetonka where the wife has ended up in there backing up and the husband mm-hmm. screaming. Go and ahead. I've like been in line and I'll hit it in park and walk up because she's like panicking in the driver's seat. And I'm like, I'll back it in. She's like, what? I'm like, just, just, I got it. Damn yeah, it, and I'll Art, just hop in, and, do the and I'll just I'll walk back because he's still got everything strapped, obviously. And I'll oh, walk yeah. back, unhook everything. I'm gonna be like, hold on, and then just back him in. He floats off. He's like, that was neat. I'm like, yeah, who would have guessed? Yeah. <laughs> Boats float. <laughs> Nothing they can say because they couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it's just like unbelievable. But the, I just don't understand, like the over the analysis. The conference is unreal because it's a completely different situation. And they're standing there just fucking looking at it. Hmm, well, yeah. I, the conference you're... is a completely different situation than the the husband screaming <laughs> who's yeah. in the boat. Well, and the best – so the best is – so once they finally get it, I mean, it's probably going to be sideways in the boat lane anyway, but they finally get it, right? And, of course, the guy is, like, telling the wife to hold the boat on the dock now because, well, I, I can handle the vehicle at this point. <laughs> Is the best <laughs> the best is now because you know I like how many times have you been like the next boat in line, right? And now it's like a personal mission where you're like, I need to launch the fastest As I have ever fast. done. Yes. Because I, I need to fucking oh, just it's destroy the them. Fucking best. It's the best. And you're just like <laughs> well, and unreal. my favorite is and- they finally get it off and she is holding it on the dock, but guess what? It's on the side of the dock that the ramp is. So you oh, got yeah. to go back in and you look at your mirrors and you're like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And then she tries to like <laughs> walk even it back. back. In She's trying yeah. to walk it back. Not happening. With Not happening. Rope. It, it ain't working. Yeah. Dock ain't <laughs> long enough. The rope, like that's going to do something. They're like, oh. And, and whoever decided like, dock Jack lines, dock lines should be 30 feet long is an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just that one gets me going. No, that's good. <laughs> I got a no. Oh, I got a couple more that are good here, but I'll go with this one. I, I think my other one is safe. Um, I actually think this one's fairly safe too. I just think it's funny. Um, I'm gonna go with the buoy tuber. Mm. It is mm. generally a dad who may be wearing a captain's hat, Definitely. almost always shirtless, and. For some reason, he just only tubes where there's buoys. And there's normally like two kids back in a back in a tube. Or maybe he's towing three of them and he's just ripping them around. And all you think in your head is, man, I have almost hit my prop on those rocks. And I don't know how, but he is just swerving right through a lane that doesn't exist. And he does it the whole day. Yeah, with kids, and you're thinking, and if it's any two of and a half feet off, deep. If any of them fall off, I'm calling nine one one because they're dead. <laughs> like they are dead. Yeah. Uh, that is that's, that's a good awesome. one. Yeah. So mine is mine is definitely because, man, I have to see it like sixty to seventy five percent of the time I'm on a lake in the summer. It never fails. Like one to two in the afternoon, I'm just like you're tubing there and it's like do you have to see bottom to tube like is that your thing i just i've never gotten it i i still to this day don't especially on gull you see it on gull a lot uh in super shallow water but yeah 
I will go with, with the buoy tuber. I like it. Honor, you are up. Okay, so we have not we have not touched on this, and I feel like I should have been touched on, but I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on this one. Uh so it is it is about jet skiing. And <laughs> like I understand I will say, just to preface this, Hotter, jet skiers have lost a lot of flack in the last five years. Because of wake because surfing. Because of wake surfing. Right. But yeah, right. we still hate those little bitches. Those the, little mosquitoes <laughs> are really annoying. The, the, exactly. The wake surfer is the big black horse fly, and these are the little mosquitoes. Exactly. But That's the it, best. It, it, that is yes. the best way to say they it. Buzz a, they buzz around, and you're like, they're not really doing much, but they're just annoying. But I want to specifically say it's not like – the guy and his girlfriend in the backseat where he does like a donut every once in a while to get her, ah, whatever. It's not those. It's not the kids. It's the grown fucking man who looks like Kenny Powers from Eastbound and Down out there seriously jet skiing like he's on a Harley and like making sure the controls fucking work on the thing. Like I had one of these the other day takes it off the trailer, leaves the trailer in the water, taking up a boat stall. And I just raised a muskie. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go around the spot and come back. <laughs> like, so good. Like, raised a really nice fish. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give it about 10, 15 minutes by the time. All right, that, that should be enough time. Moon should be setting. I'm going to go back on it. I literally <laughs> see a jet ski. <laughs> fucking doing perfect donuts around i'm not talking a little close to the waypoint we're talking it's doing a cyclone around a fish which is now getting torn around in the cyclone of the, of the just jet ski. like what is it's going like, on oh, it gets thrown out and probably thrown on shore those are the ones that i get mad about or like they'll just happen, like just decide that your boat is now a buoy that they're gonna try and race around. Yeah. Like, dude, that's oh, that's my favorite. Especially when, when you're, you're running casually... and they want to like they want to like run into your motor to get the wave. Yes, dude. <laughs> like what is yes. that? I'm like, it's unreal. You're just a, like casually going doing? across the lake at like 40 miles an hour. You're like, oh, it's a nice day, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of fast and fucking and they're furious, like, oh, and they're just oh. zipping around you, and you're like, ah. Like it's it's fine. It's fine for like a little kid to do it. Like I understand you don't you don't know any better. Like you're having fun. Wow, oh, yeah, cool. Or like they do it. But once, when it's you when know, it's you're a, like oh, whatever. When it's a grown fucking man on there, jet skiing. <laughs> like that's the most. Obscene. And he's got that. And he's got that little fucking squirter of water coming out. Yes, that dude. Shit. And this guy, Hunter, he's always going like 17 to 26 miles an hour. Yes. He's not quite on pad. Well, he's he's got to keep, keep the RPMs down. Just checking out the local watering holes. making He's patrolling out there, doing a couple donuts. Oh, yeah. Check out my sick tricks. Sick tricks. So what, what am I calling this guy for the graphic? Oh. <sighs> The adult jet skier. Yeah, uh, it, it could be fuck. <laughs> the Harley jet skier. <laughs> I wish there could be like a visual for this. If, we need pictures. I mean, can't, oh, I, I've got a, a yeah. Hang on, because I can hang picture on. All right. the. All right, yeah, uh, yeah. Hang on. It's like keep talking. <laughs> Pink, we got to come up with a creative name for this guy. Uh. Yeah. It's got to be something like the adult jet skier, the hard jet skier. It has gear. to have Wave Runner in it. Yeah. <laughs> Him. That. Yeah. <laughs> that. Yeah. I don't know how to how to say that, but that. that is, That's him. That's him. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're missing out. That's the one. That's that, it. That, there that's he is. him. That's, that's that That guy. doesn't help me with the graphic name, Honor. The adult jet skier. I feel the, like that's the best uh, way to say it. I you could say adult jet skier. I was gonna say uh, 
Uh, mine isn't much better. Uh, uh, like watered down Harley driver. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> he thinks he's just patrolling the water. <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick donut. Oh yeah, sick tricks. <laughs> The, I could put like the Harley jet ski driver. There, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's fine. Good. All right, you're up again. Okay, so this one's a little controversial, but my my dad always says it, and it is so true. Okay, so it, it's always hilarious to me. So when you're driving a car, a car, when you're driving a car on the highway you just kind of look into the windows of people and keep driving your way right well when you're driving a boat what do you do hey boater how's it going boater <laughs> hey boater how's it going and he's like oh my god every time on this river hello <laughs> hello yes hello yes the people who insist on waving at every single random yeah we're on the water we're on the water as well. Yep, the water. You got to yep. give them. You got to give it to them. Yep. yep. Hey. 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 There and, is. The, <laughs> and everyone on the boats usually, hey, with their beers and the captain. Yep. Nope. We're driving. I'm serious. Look at my serious. hat. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, it says captain. It's not even that big of an issue, but it just makes me laugh every single time. You know, like stare at someone. You're like. Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? And they kind of like look at yeah. you. They're like, "Don't do it." Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, oh, I. Well, you're yes. obligated. If we're they wait, you have to wait. We're both on the water. We're both yep. in yep. boats. Yes, I understand. We are doing the same thing. Like uh, it, we, you know, once we get off land, we are also doing the same thing. Yeah, we're here, we're comrades. We're here. Yeah. Now, if it's boaters. a pontoon boat full of people. Um, the water. I expect every single one of them to wave. They and they always do. They, they always, always do. do. Ten, ten wide. Yep. <laughs> and it, it, it's not even that big of a thing, but it's just hilarious to me. So hey hilarious. there, neighbor. I got, hey there, neighbor. I got how written you, down to wave doing? at every boat guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's and Hunter, you know this from the moment you get your boat wrapped. Oh boy. It oh. is. It oh. somehow gets amplified. Oh. I don't know how. Are you and guides? Are you it guides? Seems like it seems like every time too, <laughs> they have to crane their neck 180 degrees all the way it around just, before yes. they wave. Yeah. Yep. Like they have to do the full turn and then it's a little wave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Love that. Every single time. Love That's that. That's good. All right. So my last one, um I thought Pink was going here with Dockline Daisy. All but right. he didn't. So I got it. I feel Take good it. about it. Take it. Um, it happens almost every single time you pull into Fletcher's or Maynard's on Minnetonka. Almost every single one of these honestly come from Lake Minnetonka. So thank <laughs> God for that lake in this uh, weigh-in segment. But every single time you pull into Maynard's or Fletcher's, it almost never fails. There is one person who is somehow taking up two boat stalls with their boat. And I don't <laughs> quite understand how or how it's allowed. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's like a 16 foot aluminum fishing boat. <laughs> and they got one, the back left end tied and the front right. And you're like, what? They could Or the yachts in sideways or, or, could. or even better, you pull in and there's two jet skis. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> and there's one on each side mm -hmm. <laughs> so mine is take up two boat stalls at a restaurant guy <laughs> that's good and it's usually the only two stalls there's there's so much more enjoyment about places that have like a place you can pull up on a dock like that yes like yes the amount of this stuff that happens is just crazy uh, uh, <laughs> God damn. that is a good one is it there? Do they actually tie up to like separate ones too? Like the they're like ropes or across the whole thing? At times, yeah. It depends how <laughs> late in the evening it is. 
<laughs> just full diagonal across the whole thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite. And like, there's dock guys there, so you're like, how's this a thing? Like, because they're guys. like, I can't help this. I yeah, because no normally, like, I'm going to pull in, and somehow there's three dock guys running down to me, and I'm like, and then they like see the Raptors <laughs> or Talons or whatever in their back, and they're like, we're good. Yeah, yeah, I think we're. <laughs> right. They're like, he, he's, he's got this. Like, they don't even. They just more of come over to say hi. They don't even reach for uh-huh. the boat. They're like, hey, how's it going? Yep, nice to see you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Pink, you're bringing it up. What do you got? All right, this is a tough one here. Uh, I, I'm, God damn it, I'm gonna regret this. Fuck, I hate myself. Okay, um, I'm going with. Uh, I'm gonna have to call this one something good. I'm calling this one Freddie Fenders. Just okay, running her wide open. Going? Huh? I said, okay, where are you going with this? So this dude, he's got, I mean, probably probably some some version of a fishing ski. And mm. uh, he's got the fucking 55-gallon drum fenders over the side. Just running her wide open, baby. <laughs> They're just skipping along fucking on the side of the boat. And it's, it's and like they could easily just flip them in. Absolutely not. No, absolutely. They not. have to naturally flop into the boat. Yeah, but you luckily, can't just grab them. But he's got them on like fucking rope this big. Yeah, tied to the t- yeah, just absolutely letting those cleats work. He's he's ready for any situ any docking situation that he might come across. Yeah, yeah. He's like neighbor it, neighbor invites you over. Done. <laughs> Going to the going because to the it's so much bar. more efficient Darn. not to have to flip them out of the boat. Plus, we Darn. don't have a compartment big enough to put these son of a bitches in. Pack sandbar done. <laughs> Navy, Navy vessel done. <laughs> <laughs> I just I dude I lose it. I see them things just fucking skipping along the side of the boat. That shit gets me going, dude. I'm just like, it. what are you doing? And they're the ones that have like the cloth wrapped around the center. <laughs> Big white drums. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Oh my god. <laughs> so we will. Uh, I'll read through everyone's, and then we will go through honorable. Oh yeah, as we definitely well. need to do that. Yeah. Um, I got. Well, hopefully, I don't forget it. I just thought of it now. But uh, okay, so Ryan's got captain's hat guy, Doc Line Daisy, the team backup. And Freddie Fenders. It's a good list. I'm Solid proud of list. that. I'm proud of that. Myself, Bart, I have got Prep in the Boat Launch Guy, Weed Line Wake Surfer, The Buoy Tuber, and Take Up Two Boat Stalls at a Restaurant Guy. Honor mm-hmm. has got just Wake Surfer, which, I mean, that's, that's I a won. win by itself. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, then he's got that's like, dude, that's just like having an all star, and you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. those role yeah, players well, will kind of do their thing, yeah. Um, so he's got Wake Surfer, Shoreline Pontoon Cruiser, the Harley Jet Ski Driver, and Wave at Every Boat Guy. That's a strong, that that's is a, a very strong, strong line. That, that one, that one came out at the very end of my, the, you know, the what? waving that's I gonna hit. One. So mine, mine Everyone is very. Mine is, I got a honorable mention that's yep. somewhat minor, but I know for sure this would be Griff's one of one pick because every time we're driving on Taka, he's basically yelling at people when we go by them. It's uh, people who drive on a lake and don't understand that uh, there are lanes like in a road. So like if you're going one way, you stay to the right, the not right. the left. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's that guy. Yeah. So like when you're just running and they're kind of coming rules. at you and you're like, I'll just go to the right. And they're like, no, but I'm going to the left. Well, and you're like, oh, maybe they're actually go going right to the right left. Right. And then you look yes. behind you and they're like, no, they're not going to the left. They're just doing their own thing. It's also mind blowing at how many people don't even know what any of the buoys mean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like at blowing. all. Oh. At all. Fuck. Well, I, I just it's... remembered another one. I should have taken it instead of restaurant. Damn it. It's too late. It's, 
it's it's very minuscule too and this is 100 percent a tonka thing um but it is when you get to a no wake zone and yeah. they are barely idling guy oh uh, like yeah barely yeah in where yeah, yeah you're in a no wake zone and it's five miles an hour and they're where... like i'm gonna go 2.2 no yeah. wake and they're just like hudson yeah, yeah, yeah zero wake negative yeah. wake we're actually gonna you know they're drifting like, they're... yeah they're they're floating the current <laughs> if is they taking paddled up. if they paddled they would go faster yes negative wake for the you know the wake negative wake boats. zone yeah oh shit that that was another one I was that one dude i pissed i forgot it because that one every time i get in a no wake zone i'm like all right this is a seven minute no wake and i like catch up to them and i'm like and it's a nine minute no wake yeah. now <laughs> dude i okay i got i do have an honorable mention one plus i have a a good little story here so what one the so there's so many people everyone wants to like whatever when it's busy to get off the lake at like about the same time you know and everyone wants to like crowd the dock to get in there. And there's always the one guy that is like, like you're talking about going super slow, but his motor is fully trimmed up. So there's zero steering because the prop's barely in the water. <laughs> He's in the middle of fucking everybody. <laughs> so they're just like careening towards the dock and can't do anything. Like that. Like, Why is can't un- I stop? Why can't I stop? Yeah. <laughs> but uh. so this, this over the weekend, well, actually, yeah. So this was at a Metro Lake. I was out with one of our other buddies and we stayed till after dark. This was right before I met you up, Bart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I know uh, where this is going. So this this particular lake, it's it's a multiple lane boat launch. Like you could probably launch. I think it's probably a two lane, I think. think It's a two laner. Yeah. But anyway, so granted, the guy was in one, like he wasn't blocking up the whole thing, which was good, but he was by himself. No, this is like at night. He's by himself with like a ski boat, like an older like Bayline or whatever. And he is piss drunk. I'm talking <laughs> like can barely stand up. Right. I can't believe he even got like his vehicle back down, but he's got the, the trailer backed in like three feet too deep. Like the <laughs> only thing visible is just the bow roller <laughs> like on the front. And so he, and then he's trying Muffler to like, just go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's got this thing and he like crashes into the trailer because the eye the rollers like even with the bow like gunnel and just <laughs> boom and of course as soon as you hit it it always turns sideways right yeah. so he hits it now the boat sideways so now he's taking his shoes off now he's standing in the water trying to like maneuver this boat right so we're and we're like right next to it like he backs the trailer down to like drive on and we like get out like super quick right like okay let's just get out of here or whatever so this guy is like wrestling with this thing. And I think, I think he was even like, Hey, you want me to like help you out? And he's like, Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> yep, you're right. You're right. And, uh, and so he's like wrestling with the boat, trying to get it on there. And like, I think eventually realizes the trailer's too deep, but then he didn't like tie the boat back up. He just let it float there. So then he pulled it out and the trailer, of course, hit the boat, started like making it drift away. So now he's like up to here in the water trying to like go get the boat. And at this particular launch, I want to say it must be at like 1030, all the lights turn off and we get, we get, we get out of the water with the boat. We're like putting the straps on. You can hear this guy down there. Motherfucker. <laughs> and then, and then, and then in the middle of the whole thing, not only the entire parking lot, but also the boat ramp, all the lights just off. <laughs> and it is pitch fucking black. <laughs> and like his car's not even like running anymore. Like the tail lights aren't even on. The muffler gave out. Like, she couldn't keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> I was just dying, dude. I couldn't handle it. And he was so drunk. I, and then so eventually he gets it on the trailer and he like left. Like he drove away with the whole thing. I'm sure none of it was strapped down or anything, but I was like, that guy was so drunk and he just like drove home, like with a trailer. <laughs> like he just laughed. I don't fucking know, dude. But it definitely wasn't strapped down in any way. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh my God. But what do when the lights turned off? I almost lost. Oh, that's I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> any, anyone got any others? I thought of uh, the local sailboat club. Oh I, god, don't yeah. I 
<laughs> I, hate I those I, people too. I guess I, I have one. Um, <laughs> so it's the the fish once once a year type people. Oh yeah, and and it's fine. Everyone gets on the water. It's public water, not a big deal. But we have a fucking arch nemesis on this <laughs> one lake. We call him Suzuki guy. <laughs> hope you hear the suzuki guy that motherfucker i ne- like they <laughs> i don't get turned up with people and my buddy definitely does he gets so mad at people on the water he's like they're fucking in my way yada 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 and normally i disagree with him entirely yeah but with this guy i am so with him like <laughs> fuck this guy this yeah. guy sucks because he watched us catch one muskie on like the best spot of the lake that we're mm. always saving until prime time to potentially catch a big one off of. And it only works if no one's been on the spot and they keep it quiet and we just kind of sneak in there. <laughs> I swear to God, every time he sees us pull up there, here it comes from this resort. I'm like, Alex, here he comes. He's like, God. Damn, this guy <laughs> rolls up literally on top of the spot and parks and starts either walleye fishing with bobbers or like chucking a MEPS number five <laughs> around the boat in like 25 feet of water, like in a bandit. And you can physically watch the muskies just leaving the spot. They're like, because this guy. <laughs> and like, fucking suzuki guy and one time my buddy's like what are you doing and he looks at he's like oh, i'm fishing like, <laughs> Duh. You know, like not very well <laughs> yeah it's it's the random guys that are that uh. are like out there well it's prime time go nighttime musky musky fishing <laughs> like jesus christ get off the water <laughs> yeah Dude, that's yeah. I don't know. There, there's people that do like weird shit. Like, like there's always people too where it's like a community hole and they pull yeah. up and they gotta get up on the bow and they, I don't, they gotta like just like throw an anchor as far as humanly possible. Yes, with like some oh. chain and stuff. <laughs> thunder and then just <laughs> de- de- deploy the anchor. <laughs> oh my like, god. Like this, this, this same, the same Suzuki guy. One time, I I lost just this giant muskie on the exact same spot that he watched me, and he had his kid in the boat. Of course. And my my line um, got wrapped in the net of my buddy was trying to grab the net, and he like got it over my rod tip, so I couldn't reel. And the thing oh. is just jumping out there. I'm like, dude, 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 dude. And it got off, and I was so I was so upset at the time. Like I had not hooked a muskie that big before. I was so distraught, and I hear in the background, "Well, that's why you set the hook." And oh, my oh God. I was I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Well, you gotta set the hook on that type of fish." <laughs> Let me up this boat. Let me up this boat. <laughs> I was so mad. You're like, I want him. I want him right now. Where is he? Suzuki. I will never forget you. Suzuki, you motherfucker. Suzuki. (laughs) (laughs) To this day, Suzuki's been an arch nemesis. Blowing spots left and right. (laughs) I love it. Oh, my God. I love it. That's good. All right, boys. Well, you got any other honorable mentions? Suzuki was on my mind. That's all I got. <laughs> He's event session over. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, it's, dude! It's like inevitable. Like every time I, you go to any lake, you're just like, "Fuck these people, dude." Like I, like if you're trying to fish, <laughs> like saving the prime of the prime, and all of a sudden, Tim, Todd, Bill, and Bob come out with bobbers and sit right on the waypoint. And just chucking, you know, night crawlers, grubs on a bobber, or like they they're drunk, they don't care, and you're like, oh, do I have enough time to go? No, I don't have. <laughs> no, I don't even no. have enough time to go no. to a different lake. Like no. it's right now. It's right now, <laughs> and they're on it. 
there. Dude, are. what's the deal? So I got to ask this question because I've seen this this weekend too, and I've seen it a million times. And every time I'm like, what? Why is it? I mean, I get like everyone's got whatever type of boat they can get, right? Yeah. Why is it that like people that are really big, mm-hmm. they get like two, three other really big people. And then they get the smallest, smallest boat they can boat. <laughs> and then they all go out, and then they all go out and then and there is like two the inches thing of freeboard is teetering in <laughs> like there's I, literally, it doesn't even look like it should continue to float and it's like I get it you're out there like fishing or whatever but like what are you doing and they have like a three horse on the back fucking and, <laughs> like I, I'm just like if there's one molecule high wave. They're dead. How I have <laughs> not seen one of those boats flip. I've never in seen my it. Life. I've never or seen it flip. fall in They're or immune. something. They're immune, dude. Unbelievable. It, I just the, blows my mind. It's never just like it's never just like three like kids in like a, a 12 footer. No. I tell you, those old Sylvans, <laughs> man, they were built right. Those old <laughs> Sylvans. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, dude, there's like like everyone in that boat's over three bills. Easy. And this is Easy. a 12 footer. Female, male, <laughs> does not matter. No, it yeah. doesn't matter. Uh-huh. Doesn't matter. Gigantic. And their kids yeah. pushing two already, and he's like nine years old. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's more like the size of the bobbers that gives the flotation for the rest of the boat. Gotta be. <laughs> that big. I just I saw it this weekend too, and I was just like, what is going? And then you see them and they like came across the whole lake. Or how did you survive that? i had one of those situations i was this weekend this it must have been like a grandpa and a kid or a grandpa and a son or something like that they were sitting in front of this tree it was like the best largemouth tree where i always catch like a a a big one for that lake and Mm -hmm. i saw them sitting there they're casting bobbers at the tree catching panfish or whatever and it was like perfect timing. I was going into like be done for the day, get home, do wash, whatever. And I see him leave it. I'm like, oh, perfect. Flip in there. I caught like a five pound bass, and that guy's like, the fuck you say? And the guy almost lost it over the chair. He was so distraught because <laughs> <laughs> he's like, like, we've been fishing here all day. <laughs> Jesus Christ, mother. Oh my god! I don't know. Flip a beaver in there, yeah. son. <laughs> they ain't on crawlers today, boy. Man. <laughs> yeah, Love I don't it. know. And like everybody's got their thing, but it is crazy how it's like people's like fishing experiences are so fucking different, dude. <laughs> oh my it god, is. it is. Well, alrighty, boys. <laughs> I think we pretty well wore her out tonight. It's good to be back good to be yeah. back hopefully hopefully we will all be here we'll be bringing in uh some more interviews and hopefully another person to join us regularly um but yeah it's good to be back appreciate everyone's patience and uh for tuning in once again if you enjoy the podcast please leave us some feedback and rate and subscribe helps us out a bunch but other than that until the next one thank you for listening to another episode of pass the bar we gone.